Because you've got I powerful was... legs. How did you get the physique? Was it gym or how did you get the physique? Um, I've always been that. She's actually not got powerful legs. Do you shower in your dressing room? Do you have a shower on the day of a fight or not? Tell us about the tattoos. Shut the fuck up, oh, you yeah. little prick. But then I've got the phoenix. Hey, prick. So I'll take it from Bob every day of the week. An absolute disgrace. I'm sure this... no one will mind. Move him out of here, then, Daryl. Ricky Hatton didn't go over for his fighter because he risked getting abducted and sold into sexual I don't want to that. <laughs> Both have been rape victims. I'm not watching Frank Buglioni <laughs> live on Saturday night. <laughs> you your mind. Jesus Christ, get yourself a life. He's actually a uh, priest. Yeah, yeah. It's because his brother John Fury eye gouged him. What have I told you all this time? He's going to end up sucked out, fucked out, looking for a hand out. Boxing, um, Natters, Messenger Group. Oh, they're going to, oh, I'm going to be the king. Jade bump, you know what I'm saying? Welcome everyone to the 552nd edition of the Boxing Asylum Nuthouse, a proud member of the Sports Social Network, also found on Spotify, YouTube, uh, Apple iPlayer, um, all that good stuff. Uh, we are looking forward to a fun end of the year. We got a lot to talk about today. Uh, there was a big uh, changes seen at featherweight over the weekend. The nation of Australia had a little bit of up, a little bit of down, and we're going to kick it off with what uh, was a shockingly one-sided fight out in San Francisco, California, with Devin Haney taking a wide unanimous decision over Regis Progre knocking him down in the third round in route to that uh, just incredibly dominant performance uh, where Progre just could not seem to land. He was throwing some, couldn't seem to make it land, though. Um, Steve uh, Haney definitely showing uh, some serious quality in his step up to 140 pounds. He showed that he is definitely going to be a player at the weight. Um, and, uh, I, I can't argue with that with the caveat me saying over this last year, I'd have to say that Regis doesn't have the legs anymore. And, uh, he was a prime opponent to be picked off, uh, by the dream. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it would seem that way, I suppose in the end, it turned out from what I saw to be a one-sided mismatch. You could say it was the present and the future of the lower weight boxing beating up on the past, but how much of the past was Regis Progre, really? I mean, his peak has come and gone. Did he really achieve that much with it? I'd argue not. The big fights uh, passed him by up until 34 years of age. And he's physically, he looked like a smaller man to me, fighting at a higher weight because it was easier at that age rather than stripping himself down. He wasn't the naturally bigger guy. Hey, and he looked comfortable. Nice added five pounds to play with. We wondered how that would suit him. Suited him brilliant, I thought. Progre was doing the herky-jerky movement, a lot of energy early on. He was committing as well earlier than I thought he would, which was a good thing, especially to the body, but he was falling in. Getting countered, you mentioned the third round there, lovely right hand, was working all night, the jab as well. Haney later identified that Regis, it was a tactic, they saw Regis falling in all the time. His head didn't move, he's supposed to be slick, he was there to be hit. He, he ended up rushing in last few rounds as well, very defensively irresponsible desperation was kicking in he did dare to be great he tried a few swear bombs in the post-fight interview he was honest he said look he was better than I thought he was what else could he say the commentators at one point were talking about Progre's lack of urgency but what could he do he couldn't do anything he knew if he tried to commit he was just too slow of hand as you said Matty too slow of foot 
uh, to land anything significant. He knew he was just going to get picked off. And as for what's next, I know that's probably coming up, but my, my voice is a bit scratchy, so I'm going to try and get all the words out while they're still they're still hanging around. Yeah, what, I think... what the, did you catch something at that event, Steve? I, I no. For you. <laughs> Do you know what it is? It, every Sunday, man, I was, saying, I was saying to Mrs. Wellington earlier, last week my throat was really bad, and then it started to get better during the week. And then at Friday it started to get rough again yesterday and then today, so... It's just in time for, for Sunday evenings, but must, must because the kids are at home and you got to scream at them shouting, all the time. Shouting, yeah, like, shut the fucking bitches! <laughs> shut your fucking mouths! A lot of high pitched shouting. Luckily, we live in the middle of nowhere, so there's no neighbors to complain about any beatings going on. But no anyway. one can hear you scream. <laughs> shut up! <laughs> Quite literally. Um. Anyway, as for what's next, um, some people seem to think this is an indicator of how a fight between Haney and Tank would go. A few similarities: jab, southpaw, etc. I don't see that at all. Davis has a different set of attributes entirely. He's faster than Progre. He has a better jab. He's got those nice long arms as well to get into range. He also is able to slow the pace of a fight down, very similar to Haney. So it has the potential, Haney against Davis is what I'm thinking, to be quite a standoff fight, very standoffish if, there were, if it were to happen. Haney's talking about moving up to 147. I think he's got business to take care of at 140 first. Filled out lovely into the new weight. Let's see him fight some of the big guns if the cross promotional fights can be made. I uh, I'm looking forward to uh, all the potential fights for Haney. I think uh, 135 to 140 pounds, just stacked, absolutely mm -hmm. stacked. All sorts mm -hmm. of great fighters in there. All sorts of matches you can make. They'll look to make Garcia. I think Matty. You know, it's a nice easy, not easy fight to make, but it makes sense. I think for them, and he's very beatable. And they can keep him on pay per view. Uh, yeah. with Ryan as the opponent. Um, but uh, Andy, uh, I'm going to go a little bit in the negative <laughs> here, but I'm going to kind of compliment Sandwich a little bit, I guess. Um, Haney is a tremendously skilled fighter. Um, he, he's He's got uh, ex exceptional reflexes. He is quick. His punch selection is fantastic. Um, he, he can hurt you. Um, but, but let's, let's compare and contrast. Cause I, I think that was obviously in a way a breakout performance for him, but at the same time, you look at the way that Terrence Crawford handled Errol Spence. I, I, in the way I, I think that, that Progray was there to be taken out and as good yes. as he is, Andy, I think that little extra spice is May I swear to God, I thought the exact same thing when I watched that tenth round back this morning. Actually, I'm saying to myself, this would be the the absolute cherry on top if he could actually end the fight, stopped him because I agree with Steve. Pro Progre done nothing. There was a lot of you know a lot of talk and no walk there over the build up actually, and then what he delivered there last night as well. That's purely down to Haney. If, you know, clearly the you know the, the extra five pounds have helped him. He's um. Worked on the legs, apparently. Stamina looked good. They wasn't holding as much. Short selection was fantastic. The jab was rapid. And as I say, whenever he had to get out of trouble on that, which wasn't very often, he just used the leg step to the left. And it just really upset Progay's rhythm. Who, by the way, probably was his peak against Josh Taylor. I think that's what, you know, there's been a lot of talk. And as I said, no walk. There's been a lot of trash-ass performances. His last fight was, was pretty poor. He'd done nothing really a note there last night. The only thing I could I give him a credit I'm on, he, he didn't give up as such. You know, he, mentally he probably thought to himself, what the hell can I do with this guy? You know, this it's just the speed and the timing and the shots that he couldn't do nothing with him. And um he kept going. That's about it. And he, he you know, you could see it after the fight and that as well. It was it was basically one of those humblings. Whereas I know that he wouldn't be classed as like elite of the sport, but I think he's now done at world level. That that was a humbling there last night, as you say, and it, it could have been a lot worse if, if Haney could have just stepped up the gas a wee bit extra and stopped him. That would have been, as I say, the cherry on top, and that would have basically mentally ruined him, possibly, because I just don't see how he can come again. You know, there's a lot of killers like that way. The Matty Ass fight would be an ideal one to see. Haney, obviously an ideal favourite. Uh, we'll forget about Romero at this point. Love to see Lopez against Haney, by the way. Absolutely love to see it. But great fight. Cross promotions. You've got great. You got. I don't two... know if it's cross promotions because Tio might have been on the outs with Top Rank, and I don't. I think he might have finished out his contract. Are you, maybe you need to check that one actually. To be fair, because if he had, there, I think you'd have heard something. But and again, it'll probably it'll come down to money with these two and that as well because Lopez will be wanting big big chunks. Haney's only on big fights. Now that was pay per view there last. Did you pay for that? Just out of curiosity. 
Yes. My, did you? Yes, 70, yes. 70 dollars. So it, it was 60 bucks this time, thank God. Seems to be as well. We had a good crowd in there. So maybe Eddie might keep them, you know, take them back to the Bay Area and, uh, you know, get some fights from there. But I, lo- I would love to see his Lopez. If not, Matias would be an ideal fight in that as well. I think he wins that fight. It would just be interesting to see if the, if the guy like Matias could actually pin him down and actually kind of chin him. Um, no interest he'll have to in walk through the he'll have to walk through the gates of hell in that one, possibly. Yeah, probably. I, I'm no interest in the uh, Ryan Garcia fight. Absolutely no interest. In so that's probably what you're going to get then. Yeah, probably. And then Tank again, love to see it, but there's just like for me, I don't know if he's like fully in at 140. So I really don't know what 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 would happen there. I don't know if he would like demand. You know, weight clause or rehydration clause. I don't know. Love to see it, as I say, but ideally, because of, like there's no weights, and it seems to be if you say if he is a free agent or such, then get get the Lopez fight made. That would be an ideal one for me next. If no, one forty seven would be the next call because if they kind of get the two or three big fights or the three name guys I just mentioned there, that then there's no point in hanging about. Yeah, I uh, I think that the uh, Lopez fight is really interesting just because. Uh, Lopez is such an incredible athlete, and I, I think that's part of uh, of uh, what Lomachenko had to offer that really gave uh, Haney some troubles in their fight. Um, Join us on the call, Rob Kelly. Rob, um, I'll, I'll tell you, you are a, a, a student of the sweet science. You, you find yourself, uh, you know, more interested in some of the technical aspects, and mm-hmm. I'm wondering if you found yourself as irritated as I was when Pro Gray, instead of taking a half step kind of up and right and just shooting a left hand, knowing where Haney was probably going to go instead backed up half left and reset on the, into his opponent's strong side. It was just awful. I mean, just awful. Yeah. Well, like he didn't, he didn't help himself. Like, but I think Haney was just in control of the fight and pro didn't really have any answers there. If he'd have made that adjustment, I feel like Haney probably would have just made another adjustment, you know, that way. Like, I think that's probably as good as Haney has looked. Um, outside the Cambosis fights, he's never in, really been that exciting, but we've always known he's very technically good. I think he looked like a welterweight last night at 140, like very, very big. And Dominic had texted me just before, like asking about pro on the day, and I was like, Haney off the stick, and it's going to be boring. But it was a little bit more exciting than I thought it would be, and um, just a little bit more action packed. But Haney just fucking dominated, like it wasn't, uh, it wasn't a competitive fight. And he's kind of in the unfortunate position that as soon as he won, then everyone was like, well, Pro Gray wasn't shit in the first place. You know that way? Like, I don't think he's, he's one of them fighters that people find it hard to give him credit. And uh, that's largely due to his personality and the fact that he was emailed a, a world title. The boxer purists never forget. Um, but I think he's developing into a good fighter and having him in the mix makes that 135 to 147 possible shakeup with the, all the bigger stars in the sport getting together, but they have to fight each other. They have to fight each other. We have to get Tiafimo Lopez, we have to get Ryan Garcia, we have to get Tank Davis, and we have to get Shakur, and we have to somehow have a fight with all these guys to find out who's the best. Maybe His Excellency has something in the fucking pipeline for the 135 division. I, so I, don't might... think, I don't think Tank can get overseas, unfortunately, anymore, Rob. Oh, yeah. Well, maybe they'll make an exemption. <laughs> They've had fucking Mike Tyson over there, haven't they? So maybe they'll make an exemption for... Uh, hey. uh, the hey, exception. If, if I the thought Sal- Progre looked all- a bit desperate at times trying to land these shots. To be fair, yeah, I th- yeah, like he uh, Progre is a diff- is an odd one, isn't it? Because he was at one stage he was definitely fucking either the number one or the number two guy at one forty, like up until the Taylor fight, and that was a close fight with him and in him and Prime Taylor, and then it was just been a kind of a period of fucking inactivity ever since. Like hasn't had letdowns and that he never kind of fulfilled what we thought he might turn out to be but Haney's good man like I think he's he's going to get he's getting better as well you're seeing Haney learn on the job he didn't have big promotional back in earlier in his career he kind of did it the hard way got a bit of exposure left his own to go over and have his three breakout fights with Bob and now he's back with Eddie and I just hope it's a case of Eddie not Eddie really trying to make these fucking fights this time like instead of I thought Haney made a good point himself at the press conference when they're asking about Tank he's like if Tank wants to fight me Tank can make the fight like Tank is calling the shots on who he wants to fight so if he really wants to fight Devin Haney that fight can happen like and if he really wants to fight any of them that fight can happen I think I don't think I think Tank Davis is obviously the, the money man in and around that division Tank and Ryan and they they can fight who they want and the rest of them just have to wait for opportunities 
no matter how good they are. So I don't know. I don't think we're going to see Ryan Garcia next. I don't think we're going to see Tiafimo Lopez next. I don't think we're going to see Shakur Stevenson next. And I don't think we're going to see Tank Davis next for Devin Haney somehow. <laughs> but I would love to see Shakur Stevenson next to be fair after his last performance. They're, eh? they're, Holy they're, shit. But we just see who's the best out of the two of them. I like on, on last night's recency bias always plays a part. But on last night, you're thinking like, look at Haney has something for Shakur Stevenson. I don't know. Like, you know what I mean? I don't know. I'd like to see it anyway. There, there are rumors about that uh, Tiafimo Lopez versus Subri Almatias is almost a done deal. Ooh. Ooh. I'd pay for that what? one. Well, I would. There are rumors. There are rumors. That's, that's the sleeper. That's I need the sleeper those, in the fucking... I need, I need that fact-checked, by the way, because you're just going to put some wood in me. I need that fact-checked. <laughs> well, to be fair, Andy, it's not the first time you've had wood in you. Yeah. <laughs> I was drunk at the time. <laughs> that's what all the boys say. Anyhow, yeah. David Palmer says, are Taylor, Taylor and Progre just shot it's now or with Lopez... Oh, or, 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 or would Lopez and Haney always uh, have been levels above? Um, Steve, I, I got to say on that one, I think that Taylor might and Progray were both a little past their best when they fought their respective opponents. Um, but I don't think they were ever shit. Uh, Josh Taylor's resume is too solid. Regis Progray has some uh, really solid wins on there. Some tough fighters who, who he made look easy. I, I, I think... They they might have not been their prime form, but but to say uh, that uh, that Taylor and Progre uh, weren't uh, quality fighters uh, at their best uh, that that's going too far in my opinion. Your your thoughts? Yeah, I think it's a good question from David, and I have heard it suggested that uh, especially in Taylor's case, he's kind of bumped into To, and there's levels to this game, etc. But I think he was over the hill by the time not over the hill, but he was he was slight. I, I believe Taylor is definitely sliding. Then the other side of the mountain. Just by too now. inactive, right? He was yeah. just too inactive too. Too inactive, which was something during his prime. He was he was constantly active all the time. And I've I was listening to an American podcast last year. I've, I've said it before, and they were sort of shitting on Taylor's resume. And I'm like, I, I just cannot get on board with that whatsoever. That run he had under the McGuigans to the final, and him and Progray were the perfect dance partners. And they were both kind of at their peak, so in and around, or maybe just over, or something at that point. And it was the the perfect matchup. And then obviously, you know, he fought uh, Ramirez as well. And that was a hell of a run from Taylor. And it's been kind of sliding gradually and picking up speed on the slide ever since. But no, I, I do believe that that version of Taylor that went in the night against Progre gives Lopez a completely different fight. And as for Progre Haney, I don't know, he, he hadn't really got the resume. I don't think that Taylor had, even though they were fairly evenly matched. But uh, he's definitely on the slide. His peaks just slipped away from him, Progre. And it wasn't being fought against a good, a good level of opposition, unfortunately. No, it just uh, didn't did never quite materialized for him. And I think the fact that he went so much of his career uh, without f uh, formal promoter yeah. uh, didn't didn't do well for him because they're like, so, so basically to end another promoter, they're like, so you want us to put in our ticket seller with you and have no guarantees afterwards. Mm -hmm. That the, what, yeah. what sense does that make? Oh, well, I said this last week as well, um, that I didn't, I don't know why people didn't pick up program. There must've been a reason. <clears throat> excuse me, he kept on signing with, you know, odd jobs here and there, and Eddie DeZone, you know, kind of, he was happy to pick people like that up. Lou DiBella had him at a time. No one really, like you said, put an investment in him. I'm surprised the PBC, there has to be a reason why that they didn't fancy him. And then Ted New um, Newman or Thomas Newman, whoever it is in the chat, was saying it seems like he was brought back over to be that foil to bring Haney across with him. Uh, and that makes sense. Could be. Could be, but, um, you know, it's a shame that uh, Progre didn't get more out of his career. Talented fighter, uh, great salesman for the fights when the when the time rolled around to do as much, but uh, just uh, a little too late for him for these opportunities uh, in his career, and he came I, up I just think, to... Matty, sorry, there's sure, a question. Sure, sure. There's a question, isn't there, from... Uh, let me see. From Danny, which was related to this, so I'm just sticking it on the screen in case you want to address it now. Sure. He says, uh, Haney has won some pretty high-level fights uh, now and won, but I just can't seem to get excited about him. He doesn't seem to have any pop about him for KOs and often just finds a way. Is he one of the most boring champions to date, or am I on my own? Um, I don't know, Andy. There there have been plenty of boring champions, and, and I do think he has power, but I don't think he has a killer instinct. Um, yeah, as I say, I think uh, if he'd finished the fight there last night late, stopped him, I think that would have been, that'd have been something... To really kind of write home about, but I agree with what Danny saying. He's he's got you know he has got a nice wee resume built up now. Linares, Diaz, Cambosis twice, Lomachenko, Progre, 
you know, he's, he is certainly kind of like, you know, pulling himself for the cream of the crop, basically, at this point. All he's got to do is keep winning. Um, Chase Lomachenko fight, finally got it. It should really kind of be, you know, breaking him through. And I did think last night yeah, that was one of his be- best performances that I've seen seen from it, to be fair, in terms of activity. Um, really did like the fact that he wasn't, he wasn't, he wasn't holding much. Um, and the thing as well, I was wanting to mention about Progre. I don't know if you know, something's going to be mentioned. Any time that um, Haney actually caught him flush, Progre seemed to freeze for like, you know, for, for like a nanosecond before he could he got himself back into the fight or to kind of shook off the effect of the punch. So I wanted to kind of pick up on as well because uh, he'd done it a few times during the fight or he was getting knocked off balance and he didn't care what he come back with. Um, no, well, that's the reason no why I, I think Haney is a decent enough puncher because I thought, other than the knockdown, Progre was probably hurt four, five other times. Yeah, definitely. Fight. Definitely. And as I say as well, I mean, there's been talk about, I've seen some interviews on that as well. Haney's been working in camp specifically on his legs. So if, he's, if he can just kind of like hunker down on those you know, on those feet a little bit and that and just kind of like deliver a punch in that, I think he would uh, maybe get some more knockouts. But at the end of the day, he doesn't need to go for a knockout. What, he's, what he does. It's what he does. It wins him fights. He doesn't need to take risks at any days. He not take unnecessary punishment. He's doing it at a high level. Um, he is probably one of the the elite fighters at this point now in the sport. Yeah, okay. It's not it's not always great to watch. Sometimes you know Floyd was exactly always great to watch, but you go to admire it when if it time to time when he really been cut loose with his speed and how he would uh, counter off a defense that type of thing as well. So there's but, well, I, there's a reason it took Avon Calderon so long to get into the Hall of Fame, Andy. Some people just don't appreciate that that style, right? Yeah, there's, there's that as well. You got you got your your purists, you know you. Try to think of the more kind of recent ones. Try to throw some names out there and that, but uh, like Penel Whitaker, for example, you know, wasn't exactly the greatest puncher, but my God, the man when he did cut loose, look at that that guy Hurtado, like he knocked him through the ropes, almost put him in a coma thanks to the referee. But um, and then other other moments, he would he would easily outbox a fighter. I mean, the, the, the Chavez fight is, is one example. Forget the scorecards, he outboxed them. Um, see, it's, it's not always great to watch, but I did think last night that was one of his far better, more you know. Easier on the eye type mm. fights. Anyway. I agree, he's, Andy. He's yeah. become a more confident or something, isn't he? I think mm-hmm. like that spells in the Lomachenko fight. He thought he was losing that fight. I think we most of us thought Lomachenko still took seven rounds in that fight. But regardless, Haney did a lot better than people expected. And I think he's ironing out his flaws along the way too, isn't he? Like you know, he got caught flush with Linares. We haven't really seen him buzz since. Lomachenko was giving him trouble, but he's been making adjustments. He got better on the jab. He's got bigger, as Andy said. He's working on stuff. Like he, he looked like a welterweight last night. Like that they, division is there mm, for the taking. Nicely so filled out, yeah. You mm. got to give him that up because thing as well as you look at one thirty. If you look at his statement that comes at the camp, what's his rematch trying to make? Yeah, weight? he was like a he fucking was, vampire. He was he dead. Was maybe at the weight. Mate. Yeah, he was so almost he, white. He was grey. He was dead at the second Cambosis way in, and he somehow made thirty five again to make the Lomachenko fight. So again, he gets credit for that. Like even you know what I mean? He, 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 so Aye, he, and then you bulk him up, extra five pounds, and make up an additional seven pounds to to, to welterweight, and he looks like he, he could fill out a wee bit further. And you just don't know if he gets extra energy, extra strength, that he might just become that puncher. You just don't yeah, know. But he, still, yeah, yeah. I, I agree with you. Like I, th- I still think we have. Like a while ago, I was like, Shakur is the one that's going to beat all these guys. He beats Tank, he beats Ryan, he beats them all. But we have to see, you know, Tiafimo's back in the mix. We wrote him off, you know, after the Sandor Martin one where he's like, do I still got it? And then he went out and showed that he does still have it to a degree. Like, and he boxed really, really well against Taylor. So these fucking fights have to happen, though. Like, the fucking, if the, if it gets to this time next year and none of these fools have fought each other, what are we doing like, with the sport again? We're just going around in circles again. Aren't we? Like, so, mm-hmm. hey, let me ask you guys, and just, I'm just going to leave this open to anybody. If, Haney had knocked out Progre last night. Would he be in the conversation for fighter of the year for you? I don't know. Um, Was he fought twice this year, and the other one was Lomachenko? I don't know. Like, I think he fought three times. I think the Cambosis rematch was early in the year for some reason, like January, February. I could be wrong. The Cambosis rematch was a kind of an non-event because uh, he won by such a fucking shutout year. the first time, and the only reason that that happened was because they had a fucking rematch clause. So it was a kind of an non-event. I don't know, no, him and him and Lamach, I don't know, like, for me, Crawford's fighter there, he's only fought once, but because of the, the fight, yeah, the magnitude, I'd give it to him, you know, that way. But... I, I don't, I would, right now, I'd say in a way. My... How do you have fighter there when fellas fight twice a year? Hmm. Well, yeah, like, so I go know, back, one, like one, one of the easiest picks for fighter of the year in the time I was heavily following the sport was when Nonino Donaire had, like, that five-win year over a couple of different weight classes. I think he, he beat Monte. They've, they've all recently as well when he beat Canelo and then Ramirez, wasn't it, in the same year? I think that was an easy Might enough. Have been. I think Benavides is a good shout this year, isn't he? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, plant and uh, Inue. Inue is in in this year as well, isn't it? Heel of unified again. Yeah. That's, and the yeah, photo performance from Inue was yeah, it was fucking class. unbelievable. I think, sure. I think Matty just quickly on Hayne, he's filled out lovely into one forty. But as Andy and the and Rob were saying, there's different levels to negativity, and I think he was a lot more offend. Even though he was on the back foot last night, I think he was a lot more offensively minded than he has been in the past. Whereas the likes of Shakur, it's a kind of don't hit, don't be hit style. Whereas Haney, I don't think he was that, you know, it was a different level of negativity. Like Andy mentioned about Pennell letting his hands go and that. I don't think you can tar them with the same bush. It wasn't Rigo against, it was that fellow when he literally ran around the ring and landed a puncher around. Was it Cas- Casemiro? Casemiro. Was it Cordoba? Like, well, the Cordoba one, the, as well, yeah. The one at the one yeah. at Dallas T Stadium. Uh, Cordoba he got dropped. That was more of an exciting fight, wasn't it? He got dropped to the body, didn't he? By uh, he dropped, Cordova, but it was like everyone was criticizing him for not opening up, and then he got let his hands go and yeah. thought, oh, but dropped him. He was like, "Fuck this shit." That's right. Back to the back to the script, like <laughs> Casemiro. I was thinking of the most recent one, but uh, you know that wasn't what Haney was producing last night. So uh, it is a bit more offensive. I yeah. do think Rigo's anyway, best fighter was against the Japanese guy, wasn't it? It was the most exciting fight that he was in. Like. I was going to say, I see David Palmer mentioning in the chat there, but I don't think anyway would get the the thing as fight of the year because does does the fight of the year not get determined before the Boxing Day fight? Yeah, I, I don't give a fuck though because I mean, if you have something like that, you just got to fucking eat it's it. What's a fucking fighter of the year mean these days? Yeah. Who who's fighter? Our fighter of the year or Who, Ring well, Magazine I fighter know. of the year or the World Fighter? Like, what, what's the fucking fighter of the year these but, days? The fight twice a year, man. Fucking hell. I know, but specifically to what Andy said. You got to judge uh, them over five year periods these days or three year periods because they're so inactive. Like, anyone that fights on telly only fights twice a year, max. Yeah. Max. Yeah. We need to start treating uh, fighters the way that we treat the business cycle. It's seven years. Um, but um, it's, <laughs> I, uh, anyhow, I, I don't know. For me, uh, in a way, uh, but I'll, I'll tell you what, um, I will, uh, before we move on to the undercard, I will say I think, despite giving him shit for looking like some hybrid of W. Kamau Bell and uh, Cornell West, um, Bill Haney, pretty good boxing mind on that dude. Got to say. Um, he's I, beginning I, to love himself a bit though the ego starting to swell a wee bit there like, oh he loves a talking doesn't he Bill massive, he massive massive fucking ego television there, camera like, he was doing a bit of Eubank Senior after that fight last night when Progre walked up to him by the way he said like thank you or whatever it was and he kind of looked at him and says I'm the man I'm so sceptical and cynical about boxing dads as in general because they're generally pains in the ice but sometimes like you have to understand, like Bill Haney's probably fucking had Devin Haney in the gym since he's five. You get me? Like he's coming up along the way, all the amateurs. He's never been the favorite guy. He wasn't the favorite promoter guy. Ellerby and all these guys were, you know, saying we ha- we can't sign we can't sign Devin because you got we have to pay you watch away. In other words, like you're not a draw. You can't punch. You don't knock anyone out. Your style is not fucking exciting. So he's kind of come a long way around to now finally getting like recognition as one of the top guys and I suppose Haney like senior fucking or Bill Haney or whatever the fuck he just can't stop fucking talking about it now mm. you know what I mean like turning pro in Mexico at 16 and all you know it is yeah. a journey yeah that's true so well we'll see where Devin Haney goes from here There's oh good one in the chat by the way if Lopez and fucking if Lo- Tifimo Lopez and Devin Haney get it on imagine fucking Bill Haney and Lopez senior fuck <laughs> <laughs> That's really what make, fucking it make, the undercard. It would make Floyd, Floyd Senior and Guerrero Senior look like. like Shall we play compared to the two, man? Fucking love Floyd Imagine Senior. That, yeah, Absolutely yeah, love Floyd Senior. Is the fighter coming out to the ring in the tutu, or is that uh, part of uh, someone doing their entrance for Oh, them? yeah. What the hell is that? I'm uh, sorry. I don't know. Put don't me know. out of your gym, motherfucker. <laughs> what do <laughs> we got going on here, Ben? Someone in a balaclava Bender, and a tutu Bender. coming in? Is that a ballerina in a hijab? I mean, I have seen some shit now. Um, anyhow, um, <laughs> going, oh, down, yes, not a... <laughs> going down to the undercard here. Um, well, uh, interesting night for Australian. We'll kick it off with this one. Uh, the, there was a little Japanese shrimp that would not get off of the Barbie. Mio Yoshida uh, taking that title. Off of our friend known as Ebbs, over ten uh, hard-fought rounds, could not miss with the right <laughs> hand. Um, Dave Caldwell could, did not have the answers for, um, you know, Steve. What, what killed me on this one the most? <laughs> man, what killed me the most on 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 this one, uh, Steve, is the fact that uh, I mean, it for me, what I saw that Bridges was doing is 
every time that Yoshida landed a shot, Ebony would try to land the exact same shot. Yoshida landed a right hand. Ebony would try to throw a right hand. Yoshida landed an uppercut. She'd try to land an uppercut. She just kept trying to outdo Yoshida at exactly what she was doing well. Looked hey. awful. Yoshida Phoenix? <laughs> 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 Wait, let's move on. <laughs> That's not fucking handy. <laughs> well, <laughs> I think Matty, the original opponent, was supposed to be Avil Mathy, wasn't it? In the Battle of the Boobs, as they were calling it. But she, she pulled out. Oof. In came Yoshida. Um, the biggest takeaway from this fight that I had was that Ebbs. I hadn't noticed it before, but she, she like loves a yell, doesn't she? Every time she landed a shot, it was like ah. But uh, no, she is a bit of a Barbie, but she can fight, to be fair. She's not afraid to get stuck in and have a go, but she just uh, faded yeah, out. Yeah. It was too much for her. <laughs> McGregor went over. Phoenix, oh man, you flew, want to flew over a few days after the birth of his child to support Anthony Bridges. So <laughs> <laughs> seems oh, like a worthwhile trip. He didn't do last night. He didn't do last night. <laughs> Yeah, no, he went to support Ebony, didn't he, for a fight? Was that? Was no, he, was in, he was in Dubai last night, mate. He was, oh, he was, was in that he? Gaza against uh, Alvarez fight, the two amateurs. Oh, I had said somewhere online that he flew in to support Ebbs. Obviously not. Oh, no, mate. He was definitely he was, uh, front and centre on that card in Dubai last night. Yeah. The poor yeah, feet. What's going to happen now for Ebbs, man? It's, all she had was that world title. That's fucking... I, I, I bet... Well, all she had that was that world title. That's about... She had a world title, like... Grudge match with Shane and Courtney, I think. Oh, let's see if, yeah, for, nah, all, the, for all the normal aren't she, though? Shannon, Shannon's gone. Yeah, does she yeah. fight anymore, Shannon Courtney? I don't think she does. Don't she think so. For, for, she's the right, for the right money, yeah, she would. Shannon Briggs, let's see. You get a recent sight to her by <laughs> Shannon Briggs versus Ebony Bridges. Let's go, champ. <laughs> <laughs> she hasn't fought since, oh, a, a year ago today, actually, in Leeds. Oof. All she yeah. dipped. Mm -hmm. Well, there you go. Uh, must be, must um, be the menstrual cycle. But on the uh, on the up menstrual cycle, Jesus, <laughs> on the upside of Australian boxing news, though, uh, Andy Liam Perro yes. getting yeah. a knockout victory over Montana Love, uh, and what was kind of a uh, you know a, a touch and go close boxing match for the first five rounds. Well, that all ended ended as uh, Perro started landing some shots, dropping Love multiple times. Um, Love just didn't know how to hold on, didn't know how to do nothing, just walked right forward into him and got hit again. And a uh, referee eventually stepped in against the ropes. Uh, I don't necessarily think it was premature. Um, I thought it was pretty fair stoppage, but uh, yeah, good, good win for Australia. Australia, Montana Love. Well, I was just going to say, actually, Australian boxing, I just noticed that I, knew, I didn't follow it that closely, but obviously, over the last year and that, you know, obviously, the shows we've seen with the, the Zoo Brothers and that as well, there's a Good to be crop of fighters coming up. They got up a tie in that as well. Obviously, he's vacated his IBF belt and that. But there is a lot, uh, or a decent number, or, or wee crop of fighters coming through. And that that Liam Paro, okay, he might not be the greatest, but I tell you what, he is he is solid in terms of weight. Like he's, you know, that back's like an aircraft carrier. And as you see, I thought Montana Love slightly kind of fell apart mentally. I think he was getting maybe kind of fed up with the kind of rough tactics for be paro a little bit. Obviously, was complaints about hunting behind the head and that. But then, obviously, when he found his distance and clocked him, was, was a, I forget if it was an uppercut or was a, a left hand that caught me. But he certainly plunked him on his ass pretty, uh, pretty heavily. And then, obviously, again the second time, then laid it on. But it was a, uh, I thought it was it was a decent enough wee scrap. But it was getting a bit kind of like scrappy at times. But uh, mental, I felt just like he was. You even heard his corner saying, I'm like, you need to get yourself into this fight. And I just think mentally he probably just either froze or unraveled and just, you know, obviously couldn't deal with the pressure of what was coming at him. But uh, to me, at least, I, I just felt he, he just got himself involved in the wrong fight and just, as I say, it, it fell apart for him. Yeah, absolutely did. And it kind of fell apart in an instant. Uh, Rob, did you catch this one by chance, my friend? Uh, which one was this? Liam Perro, Montana Love. No, 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 I didn't. I saw the Ramirez one, though. Okay, we'll get to that in uh, in a second. Uh, cool. Steve, uh, that, uh, I, I got to tell you, 
you know, Liam, Liam Perro looked pretty good in there. He's got a, co- a couple of good wins here. Um, uh, just mm-hmm. annihilated Brock Jarvis. Yeah, he did. So then he had an Achilles injury or something, which might not be bid well for his future. But you kind of have to uh, think as you were, we're throwing all of these names around there. And if there's kind of two people who I would say are, are a little bit of a dark horse that on the right night could give these top dogs a, a good fight, um, one of them. I, I would have to say is Liam Perro and the other one, uh, I think Richardson Hitchens, honestly. Um, it, it, I, I, I like how these guys kind of play in that mm-hmm. division. Yeah. If he can get the bring the fight out of Hitchens, it, it could be a good one. David Palmer there saying Power versus Catchall next. That's not a, a bad shout, to be honest. Uh, on Andy's point about the Australian fighters, Sam Goodman's looking decent as well. He's fighting a 19 0 Chinese fighter, I think, yeah, this, this week, Friday week evening. Week so, that, yeah, that should be a. A good step up for him. As for power, I hope he takes out some dumb guy. <laughs> well, let's let's hope so. Um, he's uh, power knew he could get it. Montana Love. He said during the week I was reading an interview with him. You know, you can you can get it on into this guy. He'll quit like he did against Spark. He didn't quit, but he he got disqualified, didn't he, for throwing him over the ropes? And power felt that if he got on top of him, he, he would crumble. But that it was a bit strange because Love is not a bad fighter. He's not a bad boxer. Against Baranchik, who could have been a difficult one. Managed to get on top of him, retired him in seven rounds. Gabriel Golas Valenzuela, not really a household name. He's a tough guy, can really punch, put it on Love, dropped him. Love came back, won the fight on points. What I'm saying is he showed a lot of balls in those two fights. And where have they gone? Where, where's your balls gone, Connor? Because he, he can't recreate that now. Against Spark and now against Paro, he's mentally folded. Eddie will love to get rid of him. This will be Eddie's excuse to cut him loose now because he clearly hasn't got it. Physically, the tools, the attributes are there, but... He's just a, he's just a strange character all around. Yeah, yeah. Didn't bring his dog with him this time. I don't think. Yeah, I was looking out for the dog. Yeah, no, no dog, no dog. Yeah, there was no dog in that fight. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no dog at all. Uh, God, I'm just watching uh, the Whitaker fight, dancing around here like a uh, second coming of Nas or maybe Emmanuel. Oh, Nas I hope he gets knocked out, Mike. What's he doing? What's he doing, man? He, he come out to some weird entry, he was sitting on the ropes. He, he's trying too hard. Really is. He really. I, do you guys think he kind of wants to be like the 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 next Naz? I mean, it's mm, probably been no one. I'm not watching them. I'm I'm not watching it to be fair. Uh, but I will say, yes, I think he he he's reaching for something that he's no. I think there's a lot of falseness, a lot of covering up there. Actually, I think he's talented, but yeah, yeah. There's it's, it's mad that you say the Naz comparison because I would I would have I always thought like when Naz was coming up, like he was like a fucking knockoff version of Hector Camacho. <laughs> But when you look back, like how many people were able to have that unique, unique style? Like both of them were unique, really. Like I, I, I definitely think Nazim was influenced by the style of Hector Camacho, no doubt about it. Like, um, but those guys only come around once in a fucking blue moon. Do you know what I mean? It's like fucking Naz was a freak. Like, wasn't he power in both hands? Fucking unorthodox style, unorthodox defense, weird footwork, huggy jerky, like nothing you've ever seen. Like these. It's anyone the, it's that the and it was rhythm him. they fight at right it's it's that they they have a rhythm but it was him when you look back at it like you see the footage of him as a kid in sheffield like he's fucking you know slipping the heavy bag he's doing all the alley shuffles and that like in his under eight fights his under 10 fights he was just that was him you can't replicate that so when you see fighters copycatting other styles like it's you know you learn from fellas obviously whatever but like imitation is like I don't know. It doesn't. It never seems to work out, doesn't it? Not like how many imitate, how many, how many shoulder rolls have gone a fucking stray since the Floyd era? Like, <laughs> how many people fight trying to fight like Roy Jones Jr. too <laughs> with Roy teaching? Exactly. Just yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just think it's a bit contrived. It doesn't feel natural. You know the way exactly. some guys. It feels natural. You, you watch them, and it's who they are. I could be wrong. It doesn't. It feels like it's put on, like a false confidence for me. Yeah, like, yeah. like Hamid wrong. was a bit of a fucking Hamid was a bit a bit of a prick. Like, wasn't he? So the arrogance mm. it worked. Yeah, like, yeah. you get me? Like, it was real. Yeah. It was genuine. You could see that he was oozing confidence. He was super arrogant. He was, but he was backing it up. Like, yeah, I totally get what you're saying. Yeah, I, you know, and it could end up working out for him. You know, like again, like Emmanuel at Augustus at his best when he started. You know, in like in his rhythm with his hands down and shit like that. Like. He was really a phenomenal fighter. I mean, for a guy, he, with his he's record. the one that Floyd said gave him his toughest fight. Fucking on KO Nation, yeah, was, master, yeah. Yeah. Yep. he said it was his toughest fight. And anytime anyone tries to bring up like a steel or whatever, or fucking whoever, after with Shane Olsey, or he's like, no, my my toughest fight was Emmanuel Augustus. He was good mates with um, 
Well, Sheen Fagan actually, Emmanuel Augustus, and the two of them had a, mm. a few nights out on the beer together, and I could say <laughs> that was fucking good crack. <laughs> the two drunken masters, fuck me. Yeah, yeah, he was a classic. It was terrible though. I, I think what was probably about ten years ago, Steve, when he when he was shot. Yeah, he's been in a bad way ever since. Wasn't it him against Mickey Ward when he was Emmanuel Burton, I think, back then, wasn't he? Emmanuel yeah. Burton, that's right. You're right. Fight of the year in 2000 or 2001, I think. That's right. But yeah. as for showboating, Matty How Gourmet. many fucking fights of the year was Mickey Ward involved in? <laughs> me. I can barely speak now, poor fella. Fuck me, sounds terrible, doesn't it? Really? Does he? I haven't heard him speaking. Oh, maybe. he sounds terrible. Robbie can barely understand him. Oh, no. CTE, mm -hmm. big style, man. Yeah, big time. He's donating his brain once he dies. No. I, was I saying, fucking Matty. hate that, man. That's the most painful thing about being a fight fan, isn't it? You look up to it. No, I wasn't even saying I look uh -huh. up to Mickey Ward or whatever, but he provided fucking entertainment for a guy of his caliber. Like, you know, he's an average fighter. Like, oh, he he's didn't. Uh, deserve so above much average money, fights man. all the time. See, uh -huh. see, see when you hear about the life changing money, that's the type of guy that deserves a life changing money. What good is an euro and you're fucking yeah, doing well, it? Well, I know, but with a bit of help with some medical care or yeah, getting the changes mm -hmm. that, and, you know. Well, well, Set it's just up for palliative care at some it, point. It's it's just so selective too. I mean, if you look at like the shots that George Foreman took over his career over, you know, two different uh, seasons of George's, you might call it. I mean, for the love of God, that one combination that Evander Holyfield landed on him that lasted like twenty seconds could have given <laughs> anybody CTE. Fuck. I think of the punches he faced. I think of the punches he faced. By the way, over those two fucking those two stretches, actually, George probably doesn't get enough credit. In the shakeup of great heavyweights, does he like? Oh, he's because at, it, at his best, the only person that could fucking beat him was was Ali, and he had to produce a superhuman effort to do it. Like, you know what I mean? He was fucking making bits of guys. Like, holy shit! The way he beat Joe Fraser wasn't fair, man. That was like a fucking. Yeah, that was like that was like a pure rocky formal, but like throwing the towel, like Jesus what, Christ! What he that? lifted him off the ground with uppercuts, it, like it, fuck it, me. It, it, two six. rounds was that? Two rounds? I knocked, knocked him down six times, and Rob says, "Hit him an uppercut, let him lift him off his feet, and dumped him on his knees." Yeah, yeah so like he, I've he, never he, seen he, that he since or before. Like a left hook, ah, he hit him so hard, he was like he froze in midair, like the fucking Matrix. Like George Foreman was a fucking destroyer and to come back. And he's and you know what I think it is? It's because of the foreman grill and the big friendly face when he ditched the afro and the menacing moustache and he came back with a big Uncle Ben's bald head fucking hair up saying your grills. Everybody and he was like, Hey guys, and he was a shitty commentator and everybody kinda of like I think I that's that plays that, part into into like detracting from his legacy because imagine foreman in today's climate. He'd have fucking marched through guys, marched through them. Just just quickly back to Whitaker there. Did anyone see that just now? He went over to your man and like went head to head with him. What well, that was all about? Uh, he's a knob, isn't he? Like, nut to nut. Fuck off, man! That's that's crazy. Play over, like. No, no, he went up. He went up to your man after the round and sort of put his. What's head the guy's right. box wreck that he's fighting? Eleven and two, I think. Yeah. Mm. Anyhow, he's not. He's not an endearing character, is he, Ben Whitaker? Like he's just, just tied to root for him. It's really it? strange that was. Hopefully, he'll yeah, get right. knocked out by like Nate Campbell. <laughs> who, who I was a fan of, man, but that P Robbie Peden fight the, that was a, the most egregious showboating I've ever seen. Yeah, I go fucking. Like, no, you, you know what Nate Nate said about that is he said I was he said at that point I was absolutely exhausted and done, and I just put it out there for him. <laughs> I liked Nate Campbell; he was a good, honest, talented fighter. Yeah. But anyway, I digress. Pros pro. Uh, but anyways, uh, speaking of uh, pros pros, uh, that was not enough. For Giovanni Strafon against Andy Cruz to wrap up this DAZN card from last night. Andy Cruz, sharp as could be, uh, just beating the snot out of him. I can't even remember what round it ended. It was just kind of over and Thunk. over again. Um, yeah, uh, over uh, over under on that one was seven and a half. Oops, they missed that one by a shade. Uh, but uh, I, I gotta I gotta tell you, Andy, that uh, Andy Cruz uh, <laughs> add to the 135 pound intrigue. Uh, a talented ki kid coming out of the uh, the amateurs, the Olympics from Cuba, and uh, fuck, he just might have it in the pro game too. What did I say he's last week? Never trust a Cuban. What happened last night when the Cubans got beat? Nah, but this kid, this kid does look good to be fair. Um, Strafon was just, he had nothing for him, mate. I mean, regardless of what his record is, and I know he beat that Burgos as well, who's seen better days, but my God, man, he made, he made mincemeat of that guy. Strafon just did nothing. He had, he had no, he could, he couldn't get the head off center, mate. He just could not defend against anything that he had. The speed was fantastic. So, 
at 28, what do you what, what do you do with him? I mean, that's that's too experienced by fighters that he's faced now, like this year. Next year, you would think, I mean, he's you know, he's been putting ten rounders straight away, so you're thinking they're going to be trying to make big moves next year. It'd be interesting to see where he gets ranked in the coming weeks and months and that, because if, if that's who they're trying to target, certainly the guys running at the top. What would you say, like Burgos and Strafon are at top fifteen in terms of the ranking bodies? I'm being too generous with that one, but you would think anyway, it would you would get some of a some sort of ranking off that at least. So depending on who Eddie's lining up for him really, but I would I would like to see him maybe try and get a what do you call him? Cambosis. I think that'd be maybe a, a good hard yardstick. Maybe it's just too much for Cambosis for the for the weight. Um you got the Russian guy Abdullayev, I think that may be a decent we 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 stretch from as well. You got William Zapeda who's a big banger. Uh, maybe maybe too experienced at this point, possibly. You know, Frank Martin kicking about there, Oscar Duarte. So there's a couple of decent names to put him in with. Um, I don't know if they would uh, if they would uh, put him in as soon as possible. Chris Colbert, I know, has got a rematch against the guy that he robbed in his last fight. So um, that was off the table just now. So there is a, there is a couple of fights out there for him. I would think that's who they would, they would be looking for. You know, guys in the top 15 because. If that's what you know, just based off the last two fights, at least now, anyway, I would think that's the kind of level of opponents are going to be looking for because I would think they're going to try and fast track this guy pretty quick. Absolutely, uh, getting really uh, close to that timeline uh, that they had for Lomachenko, um, even with that uh, early uh, Salido defeat, that was uh, still an incredibly close fight. Uh, and Lomachenko in the second half, when he realized what the pro game was, really turned that up. Uh, so, uh, anyways, uh, Rob, I don't know if you caught this one. No. What one? Andy Cruz. Andy Cruz. No, I didn't see Andy Cruz. Was he put, good? Put that on your list. I, I think, I think you'll be impressed. I, he looked real sharp, my friend. Yeah, no, I like, I like, obviously I remember him as an amateur and that, and like, and there's been high talk. Like he could get in the mix uh, potentially, but I don't know how, like, how they're going to fast track him. What they're talking that, like he could face fucking Shakur right now or Tank right now or fucking anybody right now. Like how how good is he? Yeah, I it's it's I mean it's gonna be a tough to judge. I mean, but coming up second fight, a guy like Strafan, deep professional uh background and he fought Burgos right before that. Uh I you know, I mean a guy with a an incredibly deep resume takes everybody rounds. Um beat ah, Beat yeah. Keyshawn Davis a number of times in the amateurs. I think he, he fought that French dude as well. I think he's Olympic champion. A, a few of the Brazilians. I'm trying to remember if there was any other kind of top end guys you maybe remember, mate. It was just a, Wait, was, aye, nothing really kind of jumped to my mind. I knew actually, but aye, he's, as I say, he is, a, he is, he is one you can kind of keep an eye on. I'm definitely a contender. Um, but to say there's going to be no really much room for learning fights for him, I don't think. So what I'm noticing with some of the Cubans and that is, 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 is when when they start to get a bit of resistance back, I think that's when they start to kind of unravel a little bit. I mean, I watched... Steve, did you watch Bata Gaziev against uh, Alvarez last... Uh, on no, Friday? I, did, I didn't actually. I watched it, right? And you know what I'm saying? I, it's a, that was a 10-rounder. Mm-hmm. And I'm watching Bata Gaziev really put the foot down, right? And I'm saying to myself, right, okay, this Cuban's got to go. He's got to go. And he's not doing it. He's, you know, he, he's not really kicking into another gear. Um, a wee bit similar to what happened to Ramirez. A little, we'll get into that fight a wee, a wee bit as well. But I think Ramirez kind of suffered that a little bit kind of early half of the fight uh, as well. Um, but this guy seems, seems to be completely different. But 28-year-old, lengthy amateur career in that as well. So you just don't know. It could fall apart from him. It's just quick as it happens for him as well, you know. Steve, uh, your your thoughts on Andy Cruz before we move to the next card? Mm, just keep him active, keeping him keep him moving up the levels. Uh, Straff on. We've seen what he's got in the past. Stop Tennyson. Got outboxed by Hughes. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. One of the boys in the chat talking about him possibly fighting Floyd Schofield. That's a cross promotional one. I think Oscar will be looking to move Schofield in a different direction. But yeah, I, I like the look of him so far. He's really settled in pretty well to the pro game and. If he keeps doing this and he's got Boots Ennis' dad in the corner as well in, in the dungeon in Philadelphia, it's only going to help him. I like what I see so far. Just just keep him active, for goodness sake. Amen uh, to that. Activity is a big deal. I think especially with the Cubans because they seem like they need to stay active or they kind of fall into a certain pattern 
uh, when they're over here. Mm. The uppercut was good as well. He threw this sort of double uppercut. And Andy, you remember, it was like a, a Saad Mohammed uppercut against Lottie Mawali, that sort of yeah. whipped uppercut. It was bang. It was lovely. Lovely stuff. I'll tell you, what, what's really lovely is an unexpected upset that uh, really comes out of left field. Come at me first. I will, Andy. I need to own this. I need to okay. own this. Okay, my friend. Uh, last night, the boxing world and the featherweight division ended up quite shocked as Robesi Ramirez loses a majority decision to unheralded and still undefeated Rafael Espinosa, all six foot one of him, uh, in a fight where Espinosa was definitely controlling the early rounds. And then Robesi Ramirez uncorked a right hook, dropping Espinosa in the fifth. And if it hadn't been, at the end of the round, we might be having an entirely dis different discussion, folks, because he was in all sorts of bad shape. But he recovered, and despite losing the next few rounds, he was able to win the later rounds. And then in the 12th, Espinosa scored a big knockdown, just overwhelming Ramirez. We head to the cards, two for Espinosa, one even, the last round deciding it, needing that extra knockdown. Uh, Andy, hell of a fight. Um, uh, definitely unexpected. Espinosa was a big underdog coming into yeah. this fight. I need to hang an L here actually because I think um, when Steve mentioned it last week, this dude was what was he six foot one for a featherweight? I'm like, what's this? So I had to go away and fire up footage as we're on the podcast. I'm looking at him and saying to myself, he's he kind of fights to be doing the size of his opponent a little bit here, seems to be a little bit open up doing the middle. I should have, I should have watched be a bit more extra tape on him actually because that that was a breath of fresh air actually. I must admit to have a. a you know what? I was, I was thinking about what you said when he was having the fight, and he actually got caught. How you said he get caught because he left his chin out when Ramirez yep. caught him with the, and it was a beautiful shot by the way. How it the was uh, because he changed him? he changed foot stance and he he left he, he left his he left his guard and he got caught with caught with, it was a right hook I think it was dropped him heavy but that was a breath of fresh air. I must admit like because unheralded challenges you said Matt. I don't know really what people have kind of heard a, a lot about him, but what I really liked was the fact is at long range he was pumping out all the punches, keeping them straight shots, really making it hard for uh, Ramirez to uh, obviously he had forced to put his hands up, was in step round them just because of the sheer reach of this guy. And then this is what I'm saying, saying about the Cubans and that as well because of the amateur still, the amateur still doesn't really allow it as such because they always seem to break it up in fighting. He ain't got it. See, when he got inside, the big man was the in fighter. And Ramirez really had nothing really for him in that. He was constantly kind of come, coming forward as well, throwing high volume punches. Chin might not be the greatest. Again, it might be something to do with the fact that he's size. Maybe he's not getting the right nutrition or something like that. But he's got no quit in the man. And he's absolutely tough as nails. Fair play to him because you say that he had to come through the ring a little bit in the kind of back half of that fight, stepped it up again, and uh, made a fan out of me and that I, I should have I should have watched me more than before I made that prediction last week. I, I forget what fight I was I watched him, but again it might just be a levels thing at the end of the day. Maybe he just got himself up for it. He knew it was his big opportunity again, but very tough for featherweight, super awkward. Might be the another fun door waiting to happen. Who cares, man? But oh, that he, was, he, yeah, absolutely. That was quality. Is. That was he, quality stuff, man. So. He's he, like Ventura. He knows how to use those uppercuts as a big man too. But but like he that that shot is there if you can. It, the opening is there. But damn it, Andy, it's it'll be fun while it lasts. And I can see him in a fight with someone like a Mauricio Lara being incredibly entertaining. A Luis Alberto Lopez also being incredibly entertaining. Lots of stuff to like about what um, what this kid brings to the uh, featherweight division. Yeah, definitely, mate. See, remember we we've, we've, we've been. Overly critical, saying he's maybe like a fun. I feel like critical by calling him like a fun door because Fundora can't kind of fight at distance. He only fights in the in the pocket, doesn't he? And then gets knocked out spectacularly. But this kid seems to kind of like possibly do it all. As I say, maybe the chin, maybe not be the greatest. That, but I think I think I think we're in for a really fun ride with this one. Actually, I think he'll be interesting fights all the way. Um, probably one of those guys that will rather get knocked out rather than than than, than sit back and that. I think he'll go for it all the time and that. But certainly. Off that performance, that he's made a fan out of me, so I was like, great, as I said, fresh air type fight, and that as well. Maybe fight the year contender, I would put it in there amongst uh, Neri against Aza and um, Lara against Wood. Um, definitely, I'll maybe go back and re watch that actually. Because, um, I need to then you think maybe that um, Ramirez slightly gassed 
than the back half. And maybe that's sort of a, a I think it was just out of fucking. Game. I think it was just out of your man's punch output, wasn't it? Like he's fucking throwing over a thousand shots. Mm-hmm. And he was relentless. Mental, and I think mental the, fatigue in that as well. Eh? Mental fatigue. He didn't expect himself to be in that position. Then he's. You know, he's basically fucking hit the guy with the kitchen sink and he's got back up. That, Like you said, that shot was executed so perfectly. And a lot of fighters are not getting off the floor from that one, so I think... He staggered down the ring to as well, didn't he? He staggered from one end of the ring and he fell on the ropes on his knees. Yeah, like, he, he, he could have he could have legitimately stopped him there, like, and then he didn't. And he just grew back into the fight and he's Mexican, this kid, isn't he? The, the, the I think so, I. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Go to it if he pops next like, week. Yeah, yeah. Well, look, no, no, but I just, when I was watching, I was just thinking, like, you know, we heard the kind of Mexican style from Golovkin during the during his fucking. It was a Magans game, wasn't it? Like Golovkin had an Eastern European style. He was behind the jab. He used to throw the odd body shot, and people just say he had a Mexican style. He didn't have Mexican style, but that guy had a Mexican style last night because he was fucking relentless. Like, and for all of Ramirez's amateur pedigree, his superior skills, his clear fucking ability to punch, this guy was like. You're going. To, I'm going to fucking buzzsaw you here. I'm going to put the pressure on. I'm going to fucking back into the ropes, and I'm just going to keep throwing punches. And that, like last knockdown, was just an accumulation of shots, like just an accumulation, just a whirlwind. Like he's like Fondora. Fondora can fight, and he I'm not saying Fondora can't fight, but he can't fight. Like, but he's like he's like he uses his attributes in a way that like fucking Fondora should. Like he's fucking high punch output, everything off the jab, and then once he gets going, like he just fucking throws punches and bunches. Um, I don't think too many fellas are going to be able to live with him. I'm like, I'm, like I could be early doors or whatever. Maybe someone will go out and spark him out the next time. Like he shows he can be hit too. Like Andy said when he was looking at the table, I mean he was his chin a little bit out there. He was doing that last night too. But when you're that size in that weight division, six foot one is big for featherweight man. Like do you know what I mean? Who the fuck would okay. Ramirez have used for sparring for that? You need to have used somebody <laughs> for. Me, me for sparring for that one. I'm six foot two. Fuck me, like. See, that, that <laughs> guy, that guy that trainers but... usually had those high platform boots on before, hasn't they? But my god, man, who Alash does do that, doesn't he? No, he, 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 seriously, who would they have got? They need to have maybe a bit of uh, Fandora. Can you come down here for like half half a week, mate, so we can get the, some sparring here? The fight reminded me a little bit of when Rigo fought that Japanese guy. What was his name? Kag- Kag- Kagasawa or something like that over in, in Japan around Christmas time. Do you remember that? And because uh, the guy's oh, like yes, sheer do. size, he just started overwhelming him, and like, and he had to fucking go to the depths of hell to kind of break this guy's face to get him off him, like in the end. But yeah, I think it's hard for smaller guys to fight guys his size. Like he's gonna fucking well, let's see where he goes. Like obviously he's won a world title, so let's see who who the fuck they're gonna throw him in with. But who do you say, Mauricio Lara? That'd be a great fight. Like, mm-hmm. well, guys need violence. You're one, talking right? about output, Rob. Um, in the last three rounds, um, Espinosa landed 103 out of 309 punches. Not a huge connect rate, but he just kept throwing them. And that includes the final round where he threw 121 punches. i tell you what I want to see. And he's high up in the rankings. Nick Ball. Who? Nick Ball? Nick, five Nick foot Ball. two. <laughs> I don't care. Nick Ball will try and roll underneath there, mate. He will try and get in there and he will try and work that body. He will use everything he can. He is rough. He, but I tell you what, he's... he's is he he's also improved. tough? Oh, he's tough and rugged, mate. It's like Oscar says. <laughs> but uh, no, he's um, certainly not a static target anyway. He would be rolling underneath there and trying to really make it difficult. Bang, that would be an interesting one as well. Certainly, he's, I think, I think you know, we, we've seen Lara on that at this point, not to be fair. I want to see like fresh dudes get, get opportunities now. And Lara's had his, he, he, he gave it up as well. Maybe he took his title and been over, over weight issues, I think it was. Guys like Nick Ball are hungry and coming up. So that's why I want to see, you know, get the next opportunity. Uh, Andy, as well, you mentioned about Ramirez getting sparring in preparation for this opportunity. Don't forget his last guy he fought on the Fulton Inoue undercard, Satoshi Shimitsu, was 5 foot 11. Aye. So he was only right, a couple aye. of inches shorter than Espinosa, but he didn't know how to use the size. He just stood there. I was, was going to say there. that. I've seen mm-hmm. Shimitsu actually. Um, she was a bronze medalist in the Olympics, and he might have had a look at his record, mate. He might have a maybe a knockout loss somewhere around the middle half of his career. He does indeed. It, it was a big uh, upset at that point as well. Yeah. Never really translated over for the amateurs properly, and that. So mm-hmm. really surprised I mean, he's probably knocked him out. But this guy was totally unknown, and there's and there's there is footage here if you just took your time to go and watch it, like, which I didn't really do because I obviously picked up the flaws out of a. 10 minute fight that I watched and I'm thinking to myself Ramirez will surely beat this guy in that pool of skills but clearly this guy I mean, what I watched compared to what I seen last night was nothing compared to what I watched on that 10 minute clip last week because the output was 
phenomenal. Just the straight punches, and then when it got inside, it was just different gravy, mate. I was like, this is not what I watched last week, man. This is totally different. Yeah, you know, you always got to remember that these, uh, a lot of these kids get the, they're learning on the job, and some just get better and better as the, as the, the bites tick on by. Uh, David Palmer threw in a super chat earlier for nine ninety five, and he was asking, "Is this our our, our current? Uh, our is this uh, our fight?" He says, "Ramirez Espinosa, surely fight of the year." Steve, I'm gonna have to go back and review this. I'm gonna be asking the uh, folks in the uh, the Nutters chat to give me some nominees for certain categories this year. But mm-hmm. I, I think this one is at least worthy of review to to go against what was my. Uh, still leader from February of this year, which was Navarrete against Wilson. Yeah, uh, that was a good fight. I'm useless at this, man. My, I can barely remember what I had for dinner yesterday, let alone all the fights on this year. I'm like Frank Warren. He always sits down at press conference and he goes, that was the best fight I was ever at in my 30 years. But, you know, I've heard him say that about four or five different times. But I know, I know Tim Bradley did say last night, fight of the year. So if it's good enough for Tim, it's good enough for me. A lot of the points, what the boys have already said, it was an absolutely fantastic fight. I'm glad Espinosa got it. I think the right man won. The judges did their job. <clears throat> Ramirez has always looked a little bit fleshy at 126, I thought. And the way Espinosa fought stylistically, it was almost as if they were taking a little look at how Ramirez would fare against Bernardo Lopez. That's what I was thinking. We discussed that fight last week. Guess we'll not find out now because Ramirez lost. But I wonder whether that's what they're having a look at. Espinosa's work rate, punch output, absolutely phenomenal. Rob mentioned the Mexican style. Another point I had on my notes as well. I thought it was the body work that won in the fight. Every combination, Mexican style, ended up on that left hook to the ribs constantly. It took its toll. MB reminded me of something as well at the time. Sixth round, looked like an uppercut landed for Espinosa and, and Ramirez went down. I thought that was a legitimate knockdown. ASPN never showed the replay in between rounds, so I forgot about it. MB seemed to think it was a knockdown as well. Ramirez was knackered at the end. If Espinosa had committed more to the body, I think, in rounds 10 and 11, I think he might have stopped him late. He was bollocksed. And that right hook knockdown, I think it was round five. That was a t- that, I thought that was going to be a turning point in the fight. I thought first four rounds to Espinosa. He's had his big opportunity. Ramirez is going to take over now. But fair play to that Mexican man. Picked out of obscurity. Nobody knew anything about him. He just refused to be denied. And I'm glad they gave him the decision because he deserved it. He absolutely did. Uh, Sukhvir Singh uh, giving us five. Really appreciate that there, sir. Didn't have anything to say. Just offering it up to the uh, Boxing Asylum. And we appreciate you very much for tuning in and also contributing uh, today. If you want a chance to maybe contribute for something uh, extra special, uh, we are probably going to be doing a uh, uh, a uh, our live show on uh, next on Saturday the twenty third uh, during the uh, Saudi Arabian pay per view. Have that as a little fight companion. So check that out. And if you like what we're digging, we would obviously appreciate super chats if you are so inclined. I think we'll probably be getting uh, kicked off around seven o'clock y'all's time. Uh, for that one, Steve, looking forward to it. Kicked off the airwaves, you mean? <laughs> <laughs> Anything is possible. Anything is possible. That's a, It's been a long time coming, I say, sir. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you what. Without that knockdown in the fifth round um, uh, being so so late in the round, I, I think we're having a different discussion right now about uh, Ramirez and how he fares in uh, potential unifications. Um, so, uh, the man, boxing. Crazy, crazy sport. Um, but, um, Andy, let me offer a different perspective on this fight, uh, coming from a totally different way. Um, Espinosa, way down in the rankings uh, at, the, at the time and uh, of this fight. Uh, they didn't have to take this fight. It was a voluntary defense. Top rank for many years. Uh, you know, they just great matchmaking and keeping a lot of their fighters out of dangerous situations. And and here we are, and they put Ramirez in with this six one monster uh, for Mexico, uh, and he t- he takes a, another L in his in his young career as he was uh, heading on up, and and I just have to wonder as as Bob's aging and the the people ooh uh, at at top rank I just saw the Whitaker knockout that was nasty, and as the 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 uh, brass at top rank um, you know is not necessarily changing. Do you think that maybe they're just not as good at uh, matchmaking as they once were? And to an extent, 
phone, top rank might be phoning it in a little bit, and it costs their fighter. Um, well, we can certainly say they've phoned in a little bit in terms of the quality of the shows that they've been putting on as such and that. But, um, yeah, I, I take the point as well. I mean, if you're going through the rankings and that, then you're, you're looking for a voluntary defence. And then you look at that guy there last night, and you're saying, so that's a six-foot-one dude. But you think, well, they really clearly got a lot of kind of confidence in the guy to kind of throw him in, uh, in there like that. But, again, at the same time as you think, well, after what he's kind of went through, through he get you know get his title and that type of thing, you know beating Dog Bay, beating uh, Shimizu uh, in the manner of what he did. I'm looking at it as well. I'm saying, so I, I, I think he would he would win that fight. I, I had him kind of win by decision today, to be honest. But I just I, I, I can't really comment about, about top rank as such in terms of their, their matchmaking because usually they do kind of get it kind of spot on. You could maybe say maybe they're going to be looking to try and see if it's sink or swim because you did have a wee bit of crowd there last night. Ramirez was starting to get a wee bit of momentum going and maybe they're trying to build something in Florida and it's kind of derailed a little bit in that as well. So it'll be interesting to see, OK, you can see look, maybe the matchmaking was poor. It's what they do now on the comeback. Can they get them back on the train and can they get them back in the back in the title contention? I think they can. I think a rematch would be probably not the best idea at this point. Or is it just a simple case that Ramirez, sorry, Espinosa, sorry, was just simply kind of, it was a, it was a one night only deal. I, I don't think so, to be, to be fair. Not. The guy did open a few eyes there last night. So Ramirez either takes tougher fights kind of coming back, he maybe takes the Fulton fight possibly, if he's interested. I dare say there will be other, you know, maybe Kameda, I know he's back fighting and that as well. But they, they might even look at uh, the Argentinian, Marco Coelho, no big puncher. Excellent um, Olympian as well, I'm sure. So that might be an easier kind of comeback fight from. But in terms of opportunities, I think Top Rank could probably get him one if they, if they so wished. I don't know if they rush him up to 130. To be fair, I don't think there's any need for that. But um, certainly like a couple of comeback fights and then maybe try and get another world title shot at this point. But um, I don't know really, mate, about the about the matchmaking in the day. End of the day, we need to see these guys in tough fights. Um, and you see her sink or swim some of them. I mean, they get, the guy's no novice in any shape or form at the sport. He's a world champion. He's up in the age of, is he 28, 29? This isn't a ranked novice we're talking about here. So it was either time to say, well, listen, we want you active. You've got so many dates a year to make in that. So they've maybe made that fight. Maybe there was no other options. I'm looking at Nick Ball. He fought um, Dog Bay, so they weren't, they weren't the optionable. I'm not sure about Lara in terms of the weight. Fulton's been badly knocked out this year, and that's... They, there's no really a lot of options there, really, in the, who they could have picked. They could have sat on the, the title defence, I suppose, and maybe kind of went for a mandatory. But um, who knows? Yeah, I just think it was a little bit of a misstep by uh, by top rank. And, uh, man, uh, they might pay for that. Or if they get options on this kid, well, hell, they might have hit the jackpot because he could be in some uh, incredible fights uh, while his career lasts. But... Uh, Steve, I know you caught the rest of the undercard. I caught some of it. I didn't catch all of it. I was kind of flipping back and forth uh, in breaks with the pay-per-view. Um, but uh, I, I did see uh, a few fights where people were in tough. Jahai Tucker and Verone uh, ended up being a draw. That one was in the prediction league. Yeah. Uh, that was uh, – and, mm-hmm. and I kind of thought the the uh, the draw was a fair result in that fight. I, I thought that uh, Verone uh, – kind of uh, threw in the last couple of rounds and uh, let Tucker back in the fight on that one. Yeah, as I said to you before, you know what I'm like, Matty. I try to remember as much of this as I can. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Damien Nyber, Nyber, I saw a bit of him. Michael Polite Coffee's turned into a bit of a punch bag now, hasn't he? A bit of a journeyman, but top rank seem happy with him. Uh, Tucker, I went for him on points in the Prediction League. He gassed a little bit. Vron came on strong, um, not disputing the draw there. Torres, Got a bit of a Belanga feel to him. Not necessarily he's knocking people out in the first round, but just the route top ranker taking him. Very safety first. Uh, his personality. Let's get a lot of knockouts rather than substance. Curtis Harper. We all know what he is. He's famous for walking out the ring against the Jagba. <clears throat> he looks like someone who's sleeping under a bridge these days. But he came and, and done his best. Who else was there? Carrington knocked out Sanchez in the second round. Oh, yeah. Rowan Palanco with uh, Gary Hyde in the corner. Shout out. Cork's finest. He got a sixth-round knockout win over Keith Hunter. That was kind of a fun fight right there. It was a very fun fight. 
And if my voice permits, I'm going to defend Keith Hunter here, who was raging at the stoppage, and I'm thoroughly on board with him. Christopher Young did a decent job in the main event, but in this, he did not cover himself in glory at all. Hunter was punching back at the time of the stoppage. It was shades of Byron Mitchell, Joe Calzaghe, but even more so. And that was only part of it. Then Young did something which I complain about on this show regularly, as you well know. He kept holding on to Hunter. Hunter, who'd been punching back. He wasn't lying on the floor. He wasn't knocked out. He didn't need his head caressed. And Young would not let go of him. And Hunter went mad and pushed him off physically. And, and this seemed to be, you know, people are always raging about this. I don't blame Hunter for that at all. Then a commissioner jumps in the ring, big fat guy, and he grabs onto Hunter. And Hunter has to wrestle his way away from this guy as well. He then storms out the ring and he's annoyed. He's, you know, his brother, Michael Hunter, is there trying to calm him down as best as he can. But I don't blame Keith Hunter. Was it, was it Keith? Yeah, Keith Hunter for this reaction, Matty, because he'd just been stopped unfairly. And then he had two dudes literally trying to wrestle him grab hold of him, you know, so I think that he was perfectly well, well, within his rights to, to start swinging. Well, yeah, and when you're initially stepping in, you know, I mean, you, you've you got to do that. That's that's the end of the fight, but after you're there, if you're not holding them up after they've gotten obliterated yes, against the exactly. ropes, Which they let wouldn't. them go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. then at that point in time, I wouldn't want to be touched. Why are you still touching me? Get your fucking hands off me. And at that point in time, the fight's over. The, the They have called it. The, the fight is over. The decision's going in the books. I have completed my job for the commission to earn my paycheck. Now mm. I have nothing to do with you. Get your fucking hands off of me. Yeah, I don't I don't condone, obviously, people hitting officials. But I think the swing he took at the ref was justified. You know, the ref would not let go of him. And then, like I said, the commissioner grabbed him as well. But maybe nobody else cares about this. It was just me. But Polanco looked okay. Bit of showboating. Happy with his win. Um, <clears throat> Delante Johnson. Split decision. And I, always, I think I hear there. Delante mm. Johnson. And I forget he's Tiger Johnson. Like, he's, he's Tiger, he's he's Tiger Johnson, isn't he? Yeah, that's right. I can't, I can't remember much about that fight. Xander Zayas. Good win. Good knockout of the Spaniard. Dropped him twice with body shots. Got rid of him. He has a big fight coming up. Zayas, they kept saying. Who's he fighting? Patrick somebody, is it? Oh, I forget. I the underdog melds into one, Matty. Sorry, I can't offer any more than that. <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, Andy, I think the one thing that was disappointing on there a little bit was uh, your boy, uh, Richard Torres Jr., uh, taking all eight rounds to get the stoppage against Curtis Harper. I actually went to cooking in the seventh round thinking it was just going to go to decision over under on that fight, two and a half rounds. So I, I guess, you know, just by the, uh, by the books, you'd have to say that he uh, kind of underperformed there. Yeah. I only caught the highlights of this one actually. Um, and to be fair, I thought he looked at the stoppage. I thought he looked kind of relieved, maybe slightly gassed a little bit. Um, there's been talks about him really struggling to get proper sparring, but I think it's because he's no traveling away from home to go and get said sparring. So he needs to get his arse in gear, I think, a little bit. These 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 opponents that he's facing, no good. I've said it before, I'll say it again, and I'm fed up saying it. We will not know about Richard Torres and what he's made of until he's stepped up in class. He's no fighting anybody. And that Curtis Harper isn't he a benchmark, a stepping stone, any fucking stone. He's he, he fucking fight stoned. I mean, the referee, I think, just decided to stop that fight once he knocked the fucking braids apart and, that, and the fucking tape came off. That was when the referee decided, oh, I better stop this shit. But he had got to do much better. And this is maybe what you're talking about, Matt, when it comes to matchmaking, maybe we're top ranker are dropping the ball a little bit. Is there something wrong with this guy in terms of like, is it just about experience? Is it something? Is it about his age? Do they want to bring him along slow? But they need to bring him in against the better opponents at least at this point now. He's seven and zero, seven stoppages, I think. But you just want to see improvements. You want to see him tested. You want to see him kind of having to fight through it a little bit, having to bite down. And he's not had that a little bit. Maybe a wee bit last night, I suppose, having to go the eight rounds and having problems trying to get rid of the guy and that. But. For what I was reading anyway, it was not it was not a, an impressive performance. So again, he's just he's just, he just got to kind of match him better. But also, I think as well as I think he's got to do a bit better for, for in terms of what he's what he's working with in terms of his sparring and that. If he's going to go to Europe to get the sparring, go to Europe and get the sparring. Going to come here to get the sparring, go do it. I think he would do a lot better if he even went to Cuba or Russia or you know even go to Australia and fight you know spar the guys there. They'll get that experience against the top end cruiserweights, the top end heavyweights, because clearly the guys that you're fighting mate are not of the required quality. So I think he's going up at a little bit to be fair, and so the top rank in terms of the opponents. 
Yeah, it's, it's Steve, as far as it went, I, I was just really disappointed. He just kept falling in a whole lot. It, the, you could see a a better fighter with a, a, a good uppercut just just eating him up in the way that, that he was going about his offense. That's the one thing that really stood out for me as the fight was going along. For Torres is this, yeah? Yes, sir. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I Like I said, I don't know what they're doing with the matchmaking. I, I made the comparisons to Belanga and Top Rank do do this um, <clears throat> with fighters at, at some at, at various junctures and they just haven't stepped him up at all. He hasn't fought anybody of any substance and Harper is a very, very slight step up and you have to look at it and say, well, why is, say, someone like a Jared Anderson fighting a Charles Martin at this stage of his career or, although I suppose Torres only had eight fights at the end of the day, hasn't he? But it just, it seems especially weak, I think, rather than maybe they're looking to force a gimmick rather than give it give it any substance at this stage. And we all saw how that played out with Belanga when he eventually stepped up. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I I personally would like to see him in against uh, Johnny Rice. I, I think that's yeah. a, 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 a pretty It'll be fair. Coffee step. next, probably. I bet you they put him in yeah. against Coffee. Yeah, who uh, Rice uh, took his O. Um, yeah. Interestingly enough, there. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I I don't know, uh, Rob. How much of this undercard did you catch? Anything that you thought was uh, rather entertaining or not? Rob, thoughts on the top rank undercard? Unless he went tinkling or something. Top wank undercard, he thinks. Apparently. Apparently. Rob is none too impressed. He's giving us a uh, a show of silence in protest. But, uh, well, um, I'm going to ask you guys if you saw any other boxing action over the weekend. Uh, and if not, you may forever hold your peace. Well, Tony Oka took, oh, sorry, Tony Medioka took an RL third in a row yesterday. Um, I stream kind of cut out after about the fourth round, but he was not getting on well whatsoever. Like, he's gonna have to not... pack it in. Oh, him, mate, man. I tell you what, see, when that announcement got read out with the decision, he looked <laughs> this consulate, he looked like even a blowjob would have fucking cheered him up. By the way, swear down, he was fucking finished. That is a guy who is mentally washed. I am laughing my bollocks off at some of these people in the sport who apparently knew better. And the rest of us bums, this guy wasn't made up for it. And he was never made up for it. I would love to have seen him get back on the juice and mock his overmatched opponents again. But no, it wasn't EB. And uh, I think Martin Bacoli was the one that kind of really kind of like stretched him out a little bit and really set it all up. But um, he has been gifted, I'll say, you know, well, I'll say he got gifted the gold medal, I think. He got touched up by Peter Millis in a bad way that showed you he was, he was cannon for the struggled against Christian Hammer. Tried to get tried to rob Martin Bacoli when it was the clearest decision victory you could ever imagine. I think he even got dropped twice in that fight. And somehow they, they managed to give, uh, give out a draw to one of the uh, one of the judges. Carlos Takam tried to rob him as well, and uh, done their best again there last night, but it wasn't it to be so. That's three decision losses in, in, in France. The good on his record is close ones. None of them were, actually, to be fair. And uh, it's time for him to go. Uh, it's time for him to go. That guy isn't cut out for it as a, as a professional. He should have stayed amateur. In fact, he would have been the ideal one, actually, to kind of stay in that IBA-type reign, you know, fighting those top-end amateurs and that, because he isn't cut out for the pro ranks. He can caught with the juice, or he's no longer on the juice and that, and that's been really kind of, like, you know, really burst up a little bit and that, but it was... Uh, it's been good to be proven right for once, you know. I'll just say that. Well, and uh, you know, on the losing end of that predict- prediction is a Frenchman, Andy. So I mean, you just have to be yeah, uh, no, j- no. beyond joy. Yeah, it's good times, good times, uh, except for France, and that's fine. That, that's that's fine. Fuck um, the French. Amen, amen to that. Uh, so yeah, if uh, that's all that we have seen this week, I think we might have had one more question in. Uh, Lail Q here. Let's see here. Or just a comment, maybe. Yeah, it was um it read it out. I just thought it was an interesting sort of quick comment in re- in reaction to the Connor uh, Frank Smith talking about Connor Ben Matter. Yeah, it's Sergeant Colonel Chad Digbick says there's no delay. Ben is just a drug cheat, found out twice in drug room boxing. Have been trying to find loopholes behind the scene to make it in the UK. If Connor Hen was clear to fight as Petty Hearns claims, he would have announced or made this fight uh, weeks or even months ago. Uh, yeah, fair enough. 
it was just a reaction because Frank Smith was like, you know, we're we're sorting things out. There's been a delay. We, all parties, you know, need to be uh, content with the decision. You know, it was like a sort of swimming around here. I thought Colonel Chad Bick uh, summed it up quite well. Yeah, there. I was I was laughing my box off listening to Eddie Hearn cry that Robert Smith will have a conversation with him. I mean, really, after everything that's happened, after everything has been said, and sending the fucking hounds on onto the board and UCAD and that, they didn't want to have a conversation with you. I'm flabberly, totally gasted, by the way. Jesus Christ. I'm just looking outside to see if pigs are flying. I don't know. <laughs> depends what you're on. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. Yeah, no, no kidding. And it also depends if you got any fat people jumping from trees today, which <laughs> it's always possible. It's always possible. Um, so, anyways, uh, yeah, that was an interesting comment there. But let's get on with the action. I have all sorts of tabs open here. We there's all sorts of stuff happening uh, this week in boxing. To kick it off uh, on Wednesday. We got a uh, the final pro box card of the year on uh on this one uh, it's mm-hmm. going to be uh, uh highlighted by the return of uh Jukambayev, uh andy who as you well know uh, probably gave matias his uh, his best feat since an onion uh was able to uh, to beat him uh when he clearly wasn't at his best uh he'll be taking on uh muhammad mamone who some of you guys might know he's had a few a appearances yeah, uh, yep, he's had a few appearances McKenna, on your sword. Paul McKenna, and uh, did yep. he fight Postal at one point? I, yeah, and he beat, um, uh, um, whatchamacallum, Eggington, too. So, uh, yeah, uh, so that's a, a fairly interesting fight. Not much of a puncher. I, I expect you can buy up to kind of run through him. Calvin Davis taking on Clarence Booth, 21 and 8. Um, Najee Lopez undefeated, taking on Avildo uh, Despa. De, 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 de Pestre, sorry, Yildo De Pestre. Thank God the letters of his names aren't reversed, or his name would be Dildo De Pestre. <laughs> um, also, he's, he's undefeated, 7 0, not much under his belt as far as uh, opposition, though. But looking forward to, as always, another fine uh, Pro Box card on a Wednesday night. Uh, Nushi yeah, Lopez. Right. Yep. And uh, they got a decent card, that, yep. Yeah. Yep, you got uh, Blast on there, who I'm excited. He could be my prospect of the year with another big uh, performance there. Uh, so we shall, shall see. Uh, Going to have a uh, card on Thursday on Fight uh, on Fight TV uh, that's going to be uh, – God, I thought this – yep, this one has uh, Kubrat Pulev on there taking on Andrew Warsik. Uh, 34 and two. That actually might be a good one, but thank God everything else on there is pure crap. Uh, this this card, uh, Steve, it also has Luke Santa Maria on it. Good Ooh. enough fighter, right? Taking on Cameron Krill, 20, yeah. 30, and three. Cam- uh, Turbel, yeah. yeah, Turvel Pulev taking on Leonardo Minor, seven, three, and two. Um, so uh, Kavaloskis uh, on that card scheduled. No opponent for him yet, but that'll be on Fight TV on Thursday. Fight TV, um, which is about to become. F- Triller TV, I think it's been it bought is. out apparently. Yeah, all right, all right. Yeah. it was well, it was Triller before, and then they changed it to fight. Now they're back right. to something with Triller again. Okay. It, it, it's it's fucking as long as they don't change the fucking price, I'm being billed. I don't care, <laughs> whatever. Just fucking leave it. If all you can, well, they have bare knuckle. I need to watch more of the bare it's always knuckle. about money with you. you. You should be supporting the sport. Yeah, well, the support the sport should fucking send over <laughs> prostitutes to blow me at this point in time. I fucking earned it. You and Tony Yoka. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it would at least bring me joy. And if it's not going to bring him joy, don't do it. Send me. Anyways, uh, I got a good girlfriend. I don't need to be trying to get blowjobs on a podcast. That's terrible. Um, But anyways, we're also uh, going to head on over on Friday night uh, to Florida. So God knows what could happen down there. Fathers protect your daughters or neighbors protect the daughters of your neighbors. Um, Who knows what's going on there? It's Florida. Uh, but that's going to have uh, Jake Paul taking on actual boxer Andre August. Uh, not much of a resume. Uh, not the most active guy in the world. He's 10 and 1 and 1 at this point in time. Uh, a reasonable fight for Jake Paul, I think, but uh, he's getting a whole lot of exposure for the level of opponent. Uh, going to have a fight on there. I think Lorenzo Medina undefeated against Joshua Temple, 12 and 2, could be a good one. Uh, Ioannis Tellez. Uh, six and zero, taking on Levon Navarro, fifteen and one, and then uh, Steve. I'm obviously stoked for this one. 
Uh, Sweet Terminator, Shadeja Green taking on Franchon Cruz Desern for the vacant WBC World Super Middleweight title. Still working her way towards that uh, fight with Savannah Marshall is Green. Um, just wondering if she can't uh, finally be the one to stop uh, Cruz Desern after she's been eating all these punches. Uh, could be an intri- a good fight. I-, I think they'll both be winging them at least. Yeah. Yeah, this should be a decent night, actually. And one of the fights that you uh, haven't mentioned yet it intrigues me. Yoenis Tellez is on the card, 6 0 Cuban. I did fight. mention that, Steve. Oh, did you? Sorry, sorry, sorry. I was probably flicking Go back ahead. to CBS. Anyway, th- two fights ago, he fought Cameron Crail. So Cam- Cameron Crail mentions have gone into the double already. Uh, he knocked out Sergio Garcia, which was a more impressive uh, third round knockout. On one of the PBC undercards, looking forward. That's to right. Him. I saw him. That he was on yep. the Terence Crawford undercard, and he just, yeah, yeah, there yeah, 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 yeah. He, yeah. He, that's thank you for the reminder. That he is an interesting prospect. Absolutely, I would kind of forgotten the name, but yeah, he. Uh, who was it that he beat on that card? Uh, Joe usually, Garcia. Yeah, it's usually a uh, very sturdy fighter, very sturdy fighter, and just demolished him. He um, did. So. He, he's going in an all Cuban battle against Levan Navarro. He's fifteen and one. The machine gun kid. He's based in Florida. He got knocked out by Justin Deloach, which is a bit of a red flag. So you'd expect Tellers to to bang him out. As for Jake Paul, surely the wheels are coming off now. People aren't going to be interested. The fact that he's going over to is it the zone showing this one, maybe? Yeah, it's just regular, <clears throat> regular the zone, not regular the zone. Well, they there you go. That says all you need to know about Paul against this August. Hadn't fought in four years, and then they bought him out recently to shake off the rust. Uh, and should Daisy agree? I've never seen her fight. She's a big puncher, though, in women's boxing, which means I'm a Shadezia fan. Franchon, we know what she brings to the table. She'd crush you with them thighs. Uh, it's going to be a, This is going to be a brawl, I imagine, between these two. Like you said, winging some shots at each other. I'd say experience, man. If Desern can get through the first couple of rounds and, and Green's throwing a few bombs, Desern might sort of take over. But I'm no expert. That's obviously your, your area. But uh, as for, like I said, Jake Paul, not, not fussed on him. Looking forward to Tellers Navarro most, I think. Yeah, I can see that. I can absolutely see that. So, yeah, but uh, there you go. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, boxing on uh, each night of the week over here. Then uh, what we got next here? Uh, then Saturday, oh, my God, there's even boxing on DAZN uh, in uh, in Italy. And it's, maybe it's on ESPN Plus, actually, uh, here uh, from what BoxRec's saying. Uh, Going to have Sandor Martin again uh, in there against Mohamed El Marucci. Uh, that could be a, uh, you'd have to imagine Martin's going to get through that one just fine. He's a pretty damn quality fighter though. Uh, you could definitely argue that he, uh, beat, uh, Tiafimo Lopez, which is an incredible, uh, feat if he did also going to have Francesco Grandelli against Stefan Vada on there, uh, a silver European featherweight title on the line. Ooh, la la. Wonder how much you can get for that at the pawn shop. Uh, let's see here. And then, uh, Saturday, uh, only have one fight listed on this one. Also, to zone Josh Kelly going in against Placido Dominguez. Oh, excuse me, Placido <laughs> Ramirez. That's what uh, I was thinking. <laughs> but, uh, oh, oh, oh. Uh, but anyhow, uh, so uh, uh, yeah, uh, Kelly uh, is definitely looking better at 154 than he has been looking otherwise. Uh, anybody have any thoughts on anything I have just mentioned before we move on? <clears throat> No, I was the same as you. Same joke came to my mind, Placido Domingo. I'm looking at Ramirez's record in my box at Wanka. He's Colombian. He's 24-3. and three. He's got knocked out twice. Uh, he fought a no decision in his last fight in Albania. So he's getting about the place. He's fought in Mexico, Poland. Uh, let's see if there's any names on his record. Knocked out by a 20-0 and 0 guy in Mexico. Lost to Brian Flores. Unanimous decision. Kelly's going to box rings around him over 12 rounds, I'd imagine. But I don't say that with any great confidence because... I really have never seen this guy fight, Massa. All right. Well, uh, well, you never know. Uh, Josh Kelly getting upset is kind of an amusing thing. Uh, we've enjoyed that in the past. Um, but uh, let's see here. Which one of these do I want to go with first? Oh, obviously, let's do this one. All right. And uh, it seems like most of the action uh, is over on this side of the pond. So you guys are going to have to stay up late with your uppers or uh, wake up early with your downloads. Uh, I like that one. Uh, that's uh, a good one. Well done. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, but uh, we're going to go to the Armory, which is becoming a heck of a place for boxing in Minnesota, uh, where we're going to find David Morrell against Sena Egbeko, Chris Colbert in the rematch against Jose Valenzuela, 
Julio Cesar Martinez taking on Angelino Cordova undefeated. And also, uh, we're going to see a return of Alberto Pueo taking on also undefeated Hector Mordera, uh, 11-0 at this time. And, and uh, Rob, this is one for you, buddy. The rematch for the ages. The one that you didn't even know was a possibility, but here it is on our doorstep. Are you ready, friend? Are you ready? He's not here. Where'd he go? That son of Don't a know. bitch. That's terrible. Well, <laughs> that sucks. But anyways, guys, Robert Guerrero versus Andre Berto getting it on again. Andy's computer's resetting. My, my voice is fucked, but I'm going to try, Matty. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> to see what I can do for you. This is the final installment of uh, Showtime then before the PBC hooks it, it over to Amazon Prime. This, this is, is how, how they, they treat it. Yeah, I'll miss them. I wonder if they'll carry the uh, commentary cu cr uh, crew over with them to Amazon. Uh, uh, Abner and Al and who's the other one? Mauro and Alo and Brian Custer and Raul Marquez and all them. Be interesting to see. Might have a clean break. Anyway, back to this card. Robert Guerrero against Andre Berto. First fought in 2012, so 11 years later. I think they're both 40-odd now. Uh, the rematch nobody wanted to see. Pueyo, drugs cheat. Fighting an unbeaten guy, Madeira. Let's have a look at him. Uh, 27 years of age. Mm, not really fought anybody of any note. You'd expect Pueyo to get that one. Joey Spencer's back on the card. Um, who else? Sean McCallman, he's decent. He beat an unbeaten guy recently. Michael Angeletti, definitely one to look out for. Like the look of him. He, he's a good fighter. Kyron Davis, saw him in against David Benavides in the past. On to Martinez against Cordova. Cordova is Venezuelan. A lot of knockouts, the Hurricane. That might be a decent fight, actually. He has a win over Angela Costa, who's no, no slouch. Yeah, he, he could he, he could go for it. A rematch, isn't it, between Colbert and Jose Valenzuela. That's Rayo, who was last seen, well, by me, getting knocked out by Edwin De Los Santos. Then he lost to Colbert. That's why they kicked up a fuss about that one, didn't they? Everyone mm -hmm. thought that. Uh, Valenzuela would win the fight. Yeah, he knocked him, not Col not Colbert down. That's right. Early. That's right. Yep. Yeah. Um, Colbert got the decision. And as for the main event, Morel, he's loved in Minnesota. Good uh, base for him. I think he would give the best fighters, i.e., uh, Benavidez and Canelo, problems. He needs to get rid of this Agbeko. Two losses on his record. He lost to Shishkin, which is a bit of a red flag for me, especially the fact it was so uh, wide as well. Means you'd expect Morel. To, to go get rid of him early on. I hope that the undercard's going to uh, pan itself out and there'll be a few rounds because Morel does not go rounds. I expect him to get stuck into this guy in about four or five, get rid of him, knock him out and move on. So hopefully for Showtime's <laughs> sake, uh, the other two fights will have a bit of longevity in them. Colbert against Valenzuela is a 12-rounder this time, which could separate the men from the boys. Yeah, I, I do like that one. Um, Andy, how are you feeling about this final uh, Showtime boxing card. Sorry, mate, I missed a lot of that because I've had a problem with my computer there. I'm just back. So, you're how's fine. Steve Mason, Chris Colbert or something? Is that the fight you're talking so, about? So, the, well, there's there's a number of fights on there uh, that uh, on that final uh, card. Alberto Puello's coming back against undefeated. Uh, Holy Hector shit! Madera. Robert Guerrero against Andre Berto. Uh huh. Uh huh. Cesar Martinez against Angelino Cordova. Morel against Shayna Agbeko, and Colbert rematch against Valenzuela. Um, I tell you, I was looking at this card earlier on the day. Actually, who's this dude that Morel was fighting? I don't some, know a whole heap and load yeah. about him. Some Ghanaian based. I've on seen him fight somebody, Andy, but I can't remember for the life of me who it was. Ag He's Beko. the biggest egg Beko I've ever seen boxing <laughs> by about fifty pounds. I think yeah. it was the Isaiah Steen fight I saw actually looking yes. at his resume. Yes. Yeah. Um. I wouldn't be surprised to see Colbert finally drop that L again, actually, against Valenzuela, to be fair. Um, Colbert is just one of those kids, I think he's just, he plays at the sport a little bit, which you end up coming a cropper. And uh, Mar who was Cesar Mar I thought Eddie was promoting him, Cesar Martinez. Yeah, he was at one point. I was wondering that too. So, um, again, this, this Venezuela, you just don't know what he is. You know, he's... Be Angela Costa, which is that, that's a decent one, by the way, and, and obviously then Axel Vega, who I think maybe got beat off Kai Gucci possibly. Um, so yeah, that guy seems to be a mixed decent company, providing that Martinez is maybe just completely washed, maybe won too many wars possibly. I, I think that you know maybe we upset there potentially. Um, 
when they bank on it, mind you, but you just don't know. You just don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, all in all, not really great to be fair, is it? Especially if this is a, this is what they're signing off with. To be fair, it's, uh, Dude, your boy is whooping up on CBS, man. I'm so fucking shocked. I told you this would be a hard mm, fight. You did I say told that. Yeah. He's took under the radar punishment. Billum Smith across his career, I yeah, think. Yeah, that's what I say, Steve. I mean, he's, he's, mm. he's been involved in those kind of like I'd, those yeah, I'd be worried about him. wars yeah. early years and that. I'm saying, you know, yeah, that, he's, some of those fights have been a bit harder, but it should have been for him. Yeah, that fucking Masternak's uh, throwing this loop and right yeah. over the top, and he, he hasn't hit him perfectly clean with it yet. But when he if he does, man, I think it's fucking lights out. I'm not watching it. Eh? I'm actually watching uh, a Ken Buchanan fight actually yesterday You're watching. in the background. You're watching fucking I'm a Celebrity just to see how tall he's getting. Oh, did he win it? <laughs> I don't know. I don't Isn't know he like do. favored to win it right now? Yeah, is apparently so. Right? Oh, what the f- that was the first time he was the favorite to win anything. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess the, it's not a vacant title. He's winning it off else. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's never going to get left alone. <laughs> um, in fairness to Andy, man, he's on a fucking hot streak. He called this fucking tall Mexican kid could upset the card that he called Masnick last week. And any uh, avid listeners in the chat could get Masnick eight to one on points earlier. So Ooh, eight to one on points. I, I don't think mm-hmm. points is going to be the outcome though, on this, homie. I mean, William Smith is getting well. What eight to one on points? You get four to one on the KO, surely, you know? Yeah, I would have just taken him clean at three to one. I think. Get going into the third. And it's, it's all Masnick. I'm, I'm going to the fifth. Mad, I'm yeah. going to the fifth. I think. Are you? This is going to go well on December the twenty third. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm not actually. I, I think I am. Time zones. <laughs> we'll just blame the time zones. God damn it! Now I got to see. Let's see. No, no, I'm going into five. You're right. I was just fucking. Oh, yeah. not looking uh, it was up down. It's up down side. Uh, up down. Upside down three that you seen, Steve. That's what it was, mate. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, looks like they got Master Nick. Looking, yeah. Jesus. Uh... Hey, I, I'm telling you, I don't know. Uh, th- all right, let's not get too distracted, though. Uh, Rob, going back to this, you disappeared on us. So for the third time, I'm going to go over the fights on this final Showtime boxing card. Please give me your thoughts on what is uh, shaking on over here. We're going to have Julio Cesar Martinez against Angelino Cordova. Uh, <laughs> David Morrell against Sena Agbeco. The rematch, Chris Colbert and Jose Valenzuela. Alberto Puello coming back against undefeated Hector Madera. And also, this is the one that you're going to love, buddy. Robert Guerrero, Andre Berto, the rematch. Jesus. <laughs> that's like Frank Buglioni in the Friday night. <laughs> that's like a fucking, that's like a literal nail in the coffin for Showtime, isn't it? Like fucking you're going out with Berto Guerrero or rematch. <laughs> Give me a break with all this shit, man. Like, uh, like honestly, look at the, the new home for the PBC is Amazon Prime. Everybody knows that this fucking Showtime is dead. Let them, they're fulfilling an obligation before they get this telecast off. I'd be highly shocked. Like Ramirez and the Espinosa kid pr- produced kind of a fucking fight of the year in a fight that nobody was thinking about. Maybe we, one of these fights does something similar. Highly doubt it. Um, yeah, it's sad, man. It's sad. It's sad that it's the end of the show time, but the show goes on. Let's see what PBC um, Prime can do. Like, but that card is dog shit, man. It looks like a whole load of undercards as a main event. Yeah, it's. Uh... It's not the best card, but I think, but I think there's there's a few fights on there that that stand to uh, to be decent. Um, so um, I don't know, and and uh, I, that Carrero Berto fight could be shockingly good. I don't know. I got a hunch. I got a weird hunch. Those old guys are going to go at it. So uh, we shall see. Robert Guerrero picking up his yearly paycheck uh, from Uncle L, um, and that one will sadly be going on simultaneously. Uh, with the DAZN card, uh, take you through that one uh, and what's going on there. Uh, not as well matched, in my opinion, I would say. Got a battle of uh, young undefeateds, Junaid Bostain, 7 0, taking on Gordy Russ, the second from just Gordy Russ Jr., as far as that would go. Uh, Peter McGrail, undefeated, taking on Jarico O'Quinn, 16 1 1. Gonna have MJ Akhmadaliyev. Taking on undefeated Kevin Gonzalez. I suspect that one could be interesting. Gonzalez, uh, underdog, sneaky upset in the works there probably. And uh, then, obviously, the main event, Jesse Bam Rodriguez, undefeated, taking on also undefeated Sonny Edwards, IBF Worldfly in the WBO. Worldfly on the line. Steve, somebody's O has got to go. Whose do you think it'll be? Hmm. 
It's a good fight, first of all, isn't it? Um, I'm having doubts about this one myself. Like. Yeah, I, I I like the look of Rodriguez moving up and down the weights. Very Lomachenko-esque. He has some nice wins on his record, as we know. Uh, Quadras, good win. Stopping um, Sorung Vazaya, although it's a kind of a shadow of his former self. Good win again. Trying to think of his last fight, Gonzalez, and then Gonzalez Hernandez. Yeah, I think I remember the Gonzalez Hernandez one. He maybe had a few issues early on, managed to work it out. Very good fighter. Edwards is just one of those annoying fighters, both in and out the ring. I think he's a good. I think I think he's actually pretty good. MB says Bam KO. I don't know. I'm going to go against the grain here. I know he's only had four knockouts. I don't think he will knock out Bam. He'd be hard pressed in in the backyard as well, going into. Glendale, Arizona. He's not going to be favoured. The judges aren't going to be on his side. Crowd will be against him as well. I think he could thrive off that. Maybe make him miss, make him pay at all the right times. I'm going against the grain here, Matty, as I said on my sub stack uh, yesterday. I'm going for Edwards, man. I don't. He might not get it on points, that's the thing, but I think this might be his big performance, his big night. I do rate Gonzalez, but um, not Gonzalez. Gon Gon Gonzalez on the brain. What do you call him? Rodriguez. But I'm going to go for Edwards on points, which I know is an unpopular decision and I just, I just fancy I, he might get it done, you know. I, I, I can think, see that, though. I, I, I think, yeah, I think you might be right. The one thing that I would say on that is you're going to have a very pro Mexican crowd. Yes. And back foot boxing is not going to do much good to win point, them over. Yeah, so point. in a close fight, which probably should lean Edwards, I would think it's going to. Yeah, up that sounds family. like a fair summation of what I'm saying. Absolutely. Rob, what were you picking up on, sir? I, th I think Edwards has enough to pick Bam Rodriguez's pocket. Like, I think Rodriguez has a better resume or whatever. And But anytime I've seen Sonny Edwards fight, apart from five people on Twitter or whatever, where he sometimes look fucking... He's always looked fucking very, very good, very competent, um, supremely confident, has a good boxing style, good technique, good footwork, uh, doesn't knock a whole lot of people out, but can pick your pocket for 12 rounds. And if Rodriguez is not on it, you could see Sonny getting out ahead in that fight. Like... So that remains to be seen then what it, what it's like down the, the line if he's if he's behind in a fight and he has to pull it out of the fire. Is he gonna have the tools to mix it like that? I think he can. I mean he's shown um like I said, he has a better resume, better performances, more knockouts. He can definitely punch. I wanna see it. Like I think it's a fucking uh, good clash of styles. But I think Edwards has enough to win a decision. But like you said, well, is he gonna win a decision over there? I don't know. Like but could go the other way either. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a late knockout, like after some overcoming some moments of adversity where he's had the ears boxed off him and pulls it out of the fire. Classic Mexican style wouldn't wouldn't rule that out either. Like. The thing is, Bam definitely does have the power to get Sonny out of there. He, he's no joke as a puncher, and uh, they they are in uh, short supply in these lower weights. Um, I I don't know, Andy. Th this is a tough one. You're really high on Bam. You like Sonny yeah. too. Um, it's, uh, I, I, uh, I'll, I'll tell you this, um, months and months ago when the odds popped out on this one, I, I got a little, uh, two leg parlay with, uh, Joyce and, uh, Zhang to go less than 10 and a half rounds in the rematch. <laughs> that was a uh, butter, but also bam Rodriguez, uh, to win. Uh, so I've been sitting, waiting on that one for a few months here. Um, right. And the odds haven't moved too much on that. They're kind of sitting where they're at, which shows yeah, you money's you'll kind them, of you'll get that moving. You get that moving this week at the margin. Now, you guys yeah, are pumping the money in. It'll be curious to see if it moves a bit. Initially, it did jump just a bit in Bam's favor, but um, yeah, I'm I'm kind of curious to see where it goes on this one, and I'm I'm kind of tempted to see if the the markets uh, are are saying that uh, that uh, uh, Sunny. Uh, could win this. I, I'm almost tempted to just lay a little, uh, well, hey, a, mate, a, a little, a bit of a, a cover bet. Definitely worth to have a wee side bet on that one. Like, um, I was, as I say, as before Steve started chatting, I was kind of on the fence listening to Steve and Rob talking. I think I'm maybe just confirming myself and I'm just going to disappoint Danny Young in the chat because I've always been big on Bam Rodriguez. I bigged him up at the start before he was a world champion. I believed he was the future of the lower weight classes. However, I forget what fight it was. Anybody want to go back and watch it? It was either the Christian Hernandez fight or the Israel Gonzalez fight. I think it was the Hernandez fight. And he was a bit of a mover, a bit of a spoiler. No as skilled or as confident in regards to his defence and his movement and getting at distance that like Sonny is and that. And he was giving Rodriguez severe problems. I'm just thinking, if providing that Edwards is absolutely okay at the weight and he, re he rehydrates well, there's no issues with gas to illness, 
I think Rodriguez is in for a, a long, long night. And I could essentially see Sonny basically get so confident and go matrix mode that he'll stand in the pocket and he'll slip shots and he'll come out to the side and he'll just he'll just shoot shine you a couple of shots, but he'll make sure the judges see it. And he'll be making his point in that day. But I could literally see him pulling it out of the bag by being so on it and so in control, just so in the zone. I could I could literally see him pull it off to a point where everybody would be saying, I never saw that coming because people rate Rodriguez high like I do in that as well. But I, I think it's one of those fights where it's, we're talking Sonny up it's so mad, big it? here. Yeah, exactly. And I'm the, the way the, off. Is it, the punch, is it the punch power that could be the difference? Because you, you have a feeling that no matter how far Sonny is ahead in the fight, that Rodriguez is always going to be a live dog with his punching power. And I think someone in the chat made a good point. It might have been MB that he's been dropped a couple of times along the way by lesser punchers. Like, that's the only thing that's kind of doubting me for Sonny Edwards. I think you're right. I think you're going to get a fully dial in. And listen, if he wins, he's got the greatest prize of all. Fuck the world title. He gets to take the grow down on a date. <laughs> Let's not forget the fucking real bet here that's on the fucking line. So, you know what I mean? Yeah. If that's not your motivation, baby, if that's not written in the stars where you see Sonny and Edwards, Sonny Edwards and Clarissa Shields dating show on, tra- on fucking satellite TV down the line, like, uh, fire uh-huh. stick. Um, no, I think I think you're right. I think Edwards is probably if he doesn't win it, he's going to give a terrific performance in losing. If that makes sense. Yeah. If he loses, Robbie gets to take out Franchon Cruz, does he? Everyone's a winner, baby. I mean, it it could obviously you know Rodriguez could obviously catch him in that and. It's just interesting. It's very tra- interesting to see. You know, obviously, Son Edwards has been caught before. He's been caught before, and that. So, I'm interested to see if he does get caught flush with a power shot. How does he react? That is the main thing. Um, if he shakes it off and maintains it, the, the other thing as well is he's not got the power really to turn the fight if he really needs it as well. If he's real bother, um, that's means he's going to have to rely on his all his skill and his defensive manoeuvres okay. and his movement. I don't know. If, like, I don't know if Rodriguez is going to be able to cut the ring as easy. As- uh, if he can seen. against if he can against Sonny Edwards, I would like I'd say like Rodriguez is fucking real deal. Like he's legit, like isn't he? But there's question marks over him, isn't there? Over his dedication to the sport and that, and fucking Sonny was saying before like that he he was kind of publishing DMs where he was like, look, I will fight you if the fucking money's right. Like I don't give a shit who I'm fighting. It's not about legacy for me. It's about the money. I always worry about those guys a little bit. But maybe they have the right idea. I don't know who the fuck am I? Like I'm not training or taking the shots or whatever. But I just. I feel like Sonny Edwards feels like he could beat Bam Rodriguez and always felt like he could beat him. Oh, if he doesn't win, it's going to be kind of a Billy Joe Saunders-esque performance up to when he gets stopped, if that makes sense. I know it's no indicator, Matty, but I did think Bam looked heavy at the photos, the initial photographs well. and face-offs and all. It looks kind of... Could be. Lo- a lot of weight to strip, that. yeah. It looked like he was storing nuts for winter. You know, there was there was a rumor a few weeks ago that this fight wasn't going to go ahead too, and I'm wondering where that's, that's right. coming from. Because sometimes yep. all of the the Liam Smith fight, even though it did go ahead, that was telling that it shouldn't have. Yeah, end of November on Boxwick Forum, a few people were debating back and forth, saying it's off, isn't it? No, no, it's still on. So you're right, there is that doubt there. Yeah, so I uh, kind of curious why that might be. If uh, you know, it's going to be tough uh, if. Uh, if Bam is 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 having a hard time making the weight, because I mean he's already uh, had some experience at 115. That's where he took on Quadras, and uh, he picked up a title there as well. Where well, does that put Sonny if with Carissa Shields? If Bam can't make the fight due to weight, does he get the fucking uh, lineal title by default? Is he going to be he's emailed the date? He ends up with one of the Mexicans from last week's belly of the week. Woof. Instead of going out for a meal, sure out, instead of going out for a full meal, Rob, they're just going to go out for soup. Because we know soup isn't a full meal. I was going to say something different, but yeah, it's a good analogy. <laughs> yeah, what's happened to that Master Night fight, by the way? Something's weird's happened. It's put folk are saying somebody's been pulled out. I flip, I don't know. Steve, anybody? Not sure. so they're coming out for the seventh, I think. They've waved, Ma- waved Master Night off by the looks Oh, of yeah. Them. What? What? He was What's fucking... that fucking on fire in the predictions? How I the should fuck be back did in that happen? Week. How did that happen? Because Masternak was boss, boss broken rib. This uh, broken rib. Sorry, the same. Somebody say that Masternak was winning six one. He was. He's Masternak was broken rib. Bro- oh, Ooh, far. CBS baby. Far ben Shalom must have had far. a word in the corner. He, I, ben Shalom I, I needed that, that broken rib. Didn't oh, he? he got <laughs> lucky. Oh, he got lucky. 
Oh, he's hugging him. He's really sad that he has a broken rib. Fucking fuck. It's okay. All great things come to an end, Andy. Oh, I was wondering. Hey, it was it was good for seven rounds, though, wasn't it? Jesus. Oh, it was. He was doing incredibly well. He just that's him I, done I didn't think really level. Just had an answer for him. That that's was, that's uh, him done crazy. There. That's refreshing for me with the predictions because they were gone so bad when I wasn't in the prediction league. I was like Mayweather when he was training for McGregor, like just eat McDonald's and not giving a fuck. You know that way? Like <laughs> <laughs> starting to lose my competitive edge. <laughs> <laughs> just shows you yeah. one, no. one punch mate one punch yeah. turns it all yeah yeah so um i don't know does anybody have uh any parting say thought? what though about, about cbs right he fucking finds a way to get it done don't he like you guys <laughs> said he, sh he ships a lot of punishment and if that's the way he lose six rounds and break the guy's rib he was getting to the stage where the fan man was going to have to come into the bone no, with the he, ring. I think he, he can't. He can't really keep going to the well like that, though, can he? I mean, I've not seen the fight, but if it's if it's what yeah. you're saying, he's getting beat up and taking a bit. I, of I would be worried like. about how many flush shots he's taking, man. That was a little bit concerning. What's next for CBS then? Once he's come through against Masterman, fucking CBS, CBS CTA, CTA. <laughs> 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 so, oh, CBD, get <laughs> 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 Steve could give me some CPD for that fucking throat, man. <laughs> well, all right. Well, good conversations. We moved pretty quick, so that gives us time. Uh, I'm going to call this our culture corner this week, and it was interesting. So Spotify now has audiobooks on top uh, for, for their premium subscribers on top of everything else. And as I was scrolling through audiobooks I could download, it had a section that said, popular with listeners of the Boxing Asylum. And I'm like, well, I obviously have to see what kind of audiobooks <laughs> our people are looking at. Mine count so, for something, was it? <laughs> no, thank God. No, well, not, no, we haven't drifted there, Rob, but I'll give you a selection of some of the books that uh, the, the they, they're suggesting. The erotic uh, books, hopefully. So first, uh, first, you have Paul, first you have Paul L. Williams' uh, book, Operation Gladio. Uh, what? And, yeah, yeah, it was about Operation Gladio. Then you have Nick Bryant's the Franklin Scandal, a story of power brokers, child abuse, and betrayal. That was just me. <laughs> Kill the bitch. Uh, I, I, I know that one. Let's see here. I know all about that one. Uh, the the Westies, uh, Inside New York's Irish Mob by TJ English. Uh, <laughs> That's definitely Rob. Some of their, some of their, uh, some of the Westies' uh, grandchildren reached out to me back in the day on MySpace to tell me they were having Rob Kelly listeners. So I wonder what the fuck you want to make it at. Here, here's the one I think I actually might have to get uh, by uh, Timothy Denevi. It's called Frank. It's called Freak Kingdom. Hunter S. Thompson's uh, 10 year crusade against America's American fascism. That looks Hunter good. Hunter S. Oh, Thompson. I know him. It was like a crackhead and the mad drugs during the night and then slept during the day. Well, let's yeah. list all his good points. Fuck. Yeah. That was Mate. No, he. Uh, yeah, if you look, if you look at like his what his if you you can search for it, uh, Hunt, Hunter S. Thompson's daily routine. That'll really get to you. It's a, yeah. it's a it's a good. It looks like a good time. He died early, and at his funeral, <laughs> he, he was from Colorado. I think he died like a sixty-five or something like that. And at his funeral, he had his ashes shot out of a cannon by Johnny Depp. All right, that's pretty <laughs> fucking badass as far as it goes. Let's see here. Also, let's see. Also, here. What is it with Johnny Depp and funerals? He was that Shane McGowan's funeral during the week carrying a coffin. This guy's like fucking my cousin, man. He's a serial mourner. He's at every fucking funeral in fucking Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, so it's it's in. In. Of, course, yeah. of course, I'm not going to get anything to eat, mate. Free heat. <laughs> so, anyhow, we also have Double Cross, the explosive inside story of the mobster who controlled America. Uh, and the American Civil War, an enthralling overview of the war between states. So basically the only people listening to the Boxing Asylum on Spotify are me and Maddie. <laughs> by the, judging, the, judging by the algorithm there. None of them in my books anyway, I can, I can guarantee yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> here. We also have Simon Kersey's MRS, MRF Shadow Troop, the untold Oof. true story of... Uh, Top secret uh, battalion military intelligence undercover operation in Belfast, Northern Ireland. Oh, definitely, Steve. Can't be that fucking top secret if it's on Spotify Premium. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then. Uh, see, 
Whitey, the life of America's most notorious mob boss and killer. This, I know who the fuck. It's just uh, Dominic. This is just Dominic. Dominic is <laughs> to us. That's uh, it's it's just Dominic. <laughs> this is what I don't know. Who do Brian, I call if I want to call Europe? It says Brian Clough in his own <laughs> words, and it looks like a silhouette of B. Arthur, but I don't know. Maybe Brian Clough in his own <laughs> words. Brilliant. Brian Clough. What a fucking legend. Brilliant. Storm and Norman Bucklands, the new Brian Clough. Clough. I'll tell you a story by Brian Clough. Walked into Wimbledon's uh, dressing room. Wimbledon were like the fucking badass people back in the day. And he asked me to turn the music down. They told me to fuck off. So he walked back in, took up the fucking ghetto blaster, threw it against the wall, went like, play your fucking music now, Wimbledon, and walked right out the door. That's fucking badass. <laughs> oh, okay. Was it was it Mark Crossley, the goalkeeper? Matt Crossley, I yeah, yeah. Uh, he, he invited him over. He told him when he was playing at Forest, he had to come over on Sunday. So he had to come over to the house, and he was playing him for his fucking son's Sunday league That's team right. in the goal. In the goal, they got fined and everything. <laughs> and he charged him the fine, didn't he? <laughs> he charged him the fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> What a fucking legend. Remember him punching the fellas on the fucking pitch when they were really pitching but, but, He's Stand there throwing right hooks, he five foot fucking four, bam, bam, bam. Take me with the fucking collar, throw them off the pitch, take your seat, sir. But, I have no clue what the fuck you guys are talking about. Hit Roy, right. get a few smacks allegedly. You should listen to that anyway. audio about Matty. Cluffy was Matty. a legend. Yeah, Cluffy's oh, a legend, hey, I, t- a YouTube Brian Clough interviews, mate. You kind of okay. you kind of help me be uh, impressed. Okay. Do you think I should also download Forgotten Voices of the Falklands by Hugh McManus? <laughs> Who's who are our listeners here? <laughs> <laughs> We've got Argentinians listening. To you. <laughs> we have people on Andy both Ryan. sides of fucking apparent divide here. We, we also have Wayne McArdle's <laughs> Slinging Arrows. Oh, I among, among the Ultras by James Montag. Uh, let's see here. And the last two, uh, the, the, the Forgotten Highlander, uh, my incredible story of survival during the war in the Far East by Alistair Urquhart. And uh, also... Uh, where... Urquhart, Alistair Urquhart, mate. It's got okay. a Q in it. <laughs> okay. And then also, Where Did I Go Right? How the Left Lost Me by Jeff Norcott. Uh, oh, so that's the selection. Jeff for Jeff Norcott. For fuck's sake. Asylum <laughs> listeners are tuning into as far as <laughs> audiobooks. And I'm surprised. As the that's listenership dumb. goes How did they get up on a Monday morning? I'm a little bit surprised it's as tame as that. I would have thought it'd been like, how do you fucking kill a bird and make a skin out of her dress or whatever the fuck, you know what I mean? What their interest would be. Now, this is interesting. They had one about the Franklin scandal. I know a fair bit about that. I'm like, ah, fuck, I might have to listen to that one. Son of a bitch. Um, but anyhow. That one uh, kind of proves all conspiracy theories are true, doesn't it? <laughs> It's so fucked up, man. Yeah. So I had a, I have a friend who served in the uh, Nebraska. Fuck off, man. Will you just talk out of the box and you want to fucking get into the Franklin scandal? Yeah, fucking sure, 10 o'clock real at quick, night. Real quick, I'll say I had a friend who served <laughs> in the Nebraska legislature like 25 years after, and there were still whispers about it during that time. Like, that shit is, yeah, anyhow. Uh, but so uh, I think that's all the boxing we have for the weekend. Uh, a little bit more. So, Steve, if, if you're ready to rock and roll, I think it's time for the Bell You of the Week. Yes, uh, I'll start. Whether I'll finish or not is another matter. Anyway, episode five five two. Bell, you sorry, sorry for first time, on. Steve. Before <laughs> you go, put on Danny like... Young's comment there about his algorithm. It says, oh. "Mine was the real Thailand. How to be sexually, uh, how to be successful sexually by David Hay and the Life of Times of Ricky Gravel." <laughs> 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 I, uh, so I thought the subtitle of that book would be "I thought she was a woman." I prefer how to be s- successfully sexual by Ricky Gravel than David Hayes. <laughs> MTK enforcer <laughs> Rick Gravel. Right, by the week episode five five two. Steve's here. That's me. Matt is here. Andy, rapping Rob Kelly as well. We'll play us in here. Someone sent this to me during the week. Uh, being what was it? Floyd was in trouble with the NFTs and the smart investments, but it hasn't stopped him. He's got back on the horse, 50-0, and 0, undefeated, with another advert and a bit of financial advice for, for us listeners. Over the last few years, I've been working with my amazing team to build Mayweather Fitness into a huge success. Now, you can be a part of that journey by becoming an investor and building your own business legacy together with me. I truly believe that this will be a, a multi-billion dollar company someday. It's always about generational wealth. Always. <laughs> All over that 
that shit, baby. He is literally endorsing any fucking bit. If we could get him a pitch for the boxing asylum, he'd be like, I truly believe the boxing asylum is going to generate generational wealth. It's a hell of a podcast. We have made smart investments. Steve Wellings is a hell of a journalist. <laughs> Honestly, right? We can fucking just get this fella 500 bills. He'd do that for us. He, he put up an Instagram post last week to say that nowadays everybody is having plastic surgery. So, me, myself, Floyd Mayweather, I have bought three plastic surgery companies in Miami. So, if you was in Miami and you want to get plastic surgery, come to Floyd Mayweather. That's the ad. That's the <laughs> fucking ad. Let me just say, though, Rob, like, for the way that he's saying this, for all those people who think he's illiterate, no, he's clearly reading that off a teleprompter. <laughs> he can at least make oh, Teleprompter? Read. You're reading off his fucking iPad. He's, he's, uh, fucking, he's, he's, he shoots all the ads he's, in his house. He's a Nick. <laughs> this guy, man. He's a fucking brass Nick, man. He's, 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 he's getting an earpiece. He's getting that fed to him so he can repeat it. Yeah. He can read. There's never any call to action, is the man? He's not, he's not good at the marketing, Andy. I'm a 50 cent offered on my, was it a million dollars to read the first chapter of Harry Potter? It's a bastard. It's a bastard. <laughs> why, why is it always negative stuff about Mayweather, though? Why don't we show him, like, him taking his grandson ice skating? Ah, that was cool, man. I like that shit. The yeah. grand, grand, grandson is the son of NBA young boy and yeah, yeah, Mayweather. So good luck to him. We wish him well. <laughs> we do. We, do. we certainly do. Give us a piece, Floyd. Give yeah, us- she was sister wife in it, wasn't she? And then she sister knifed it into somebody's back, and she nearly went to prison because That's NBA right. young boy had the sister wife set up, which is kind of like a David Hay scenario for anybody who doesn't know. But uh, more of the sister wife, and I think. Yeah, I'm on board, hundred percent. I tell you, who else is on board, Andy? Here he is. He was in the Haney corner. Before the announcement uh, of the decision had even been made, like Don King <laughs> jumping over the bodies. <laughs> yeah, exactly, mate. I tell you, but uh, young Mauricio here, as a young boy, grew up on the stories for Uncle Don and his dad Jose. Listen, this is what you do, son. When they fucking get beat, you claiming you make sure you leave with the winner. Hey, Don, you tell him, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I can snake. He's loving life. Uh, Matty, I know you're not anywhere close to. Los Angeles, but if you were on Monday and you were wondering what you wanted to do with yourself, a media alert went out this morning. Eddie Hearn, media availability in Los oh, Angeles here. on Monday. If, if, oh. Box New, if Box News are listening, actually, they, what do you call Andy? What's his, what's his surname? Oh, is the, the, with, it begins with a P, doesn't it? Aye. So, apart, I was watching the, an interview there. Eddie was saying to him, or apparently Andy had been complaining, he couldn't get a holiday, Eddie. For an interview, and Eddie had uh, snidely told him that it was your position in the queue, Andy. You've got to be a bit more aggressive. So, Andy, if you're listening, mate, you know, he's available in Los Angeles tomorrow morning for you. They are availability. <laughs> what <laughs> what a dickhead, available. Though, eh? Yeah. Oh, dear. I'll tell you one man who's always available. Never mind Floyd. It's this guy. The number one reason is not whether or son like UK homeowners. He's, <laughs> he's promoting startmysolarsearch.com. Sake. <laughs> They're all the grift right, these dude. days, eh? <laughs> They're all the grift these days, man. We should do the same. We should get somebody to pay us to do this shit, man. We'd do it all night yeah. long, baby. If anyone's listening, you want to throw us a few shekels, we'll call out all the shit of the day, Andy. We'll promote CBD, CBS, <laughs> IRS. Yeah, but, but, Fuck's <laughs> sake. Look at IRA, this UDA. <laughs> 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 we'll take that drug money, baby. <laughs> it's all this these days, isn't it? That's anyway, me, that's what is. <coughs> the number one reason is not about what's to say is not about weather, sunlight, UK homeowners. <laughs> all right, <laughs> seems like a very Floyd esque style. Of fucking... Actually, who's worse for fucking hawking any old shit, Floyd Mayweather or Big John Fisher? Well, Big John just knew the game here, mate. Floyd's been a true credit to the craft for a number of years How? now, so. I, I, I don't know. I mean, legitimately, Floyd Mayweather is actually fit and Big John blocks out the sun. So uh, <laughs> the, the Floyd thing really intrigues me, though. Like, it's, it's just see, it, it, it fucking fascinates me for a guy who's achieved that much mm-hmm. in the sport, right? And accumulated that amount of money. He seems like a fucking, he's like a, almost like a childlike figure, isn't he? Who's never been loved or something. Like, he's like, he seems mm-hmm. like he's desperate for friends and he gets pulled into any old fucking pyramid Ponzi scheme to <laughs> advertise on his Instagram. Burger. It's insane, man. <laughs> isn't it insane? Like, think yeah. about it. He's one of the greatest, greatest athletes of his, of his generation. Who else? Could you imagine if Anthony Joshua just fucking popped up on his IG? Even Anthony Joshua, like, 
fucking advertising three plastic surgery companies. People think he lost his fucking mind. Like, what is going on with me with her, man? It seems like a <laughs> crazy life. Like, fuck me. He is like but I think it's all in him, man. <laughs> it's, that, it's that Vegas thing, though, isn't it? Everyone over there has a fucking dream and a scheme. Like, I think he's just fucking... And he has no friends, so he just gets from brought into this shit. <laughs> I have <Yeah>. a dream. <laughs> He is. Uh, he, he's a loner. He's got no true friends. Will be. That's, friend, true, that's true. That because you, you yeah. see some of these videos and pictures of him, man. He's standing in his fucking head in this big, massive fucking house. There's nobody way on me. He is. He's like a child. Like Rob says, never grown up. Like. It, to, it, it, yeah, so. to be fair, he does have to have a big house with wide doorways. It's just <clears> functionality. Yeah. Shout out to Floyd. Uh, Match in boxing. Our partners bet online on score AG have opened odds for a fight day five k. Between Eddie Hearn and Frank Smith, Matty, this Saturday. Gamble responsibly if you're betting on these two. Would you, would you parlay on Frank and Eddie? Uh, there's just no value on Eddie. It, it fucking, yeah, I mean, you got to bet five to win one. That, that That's terrible. You know, you almost have to just think, like, per usual, Eddie will stumble near the finish line and, uh, and Smith will be able to come out ahead, just like everything else uh, that Eddie's done. Big, tall lad races, little fat lad. It's um, it looks one sided to me. <laughs> well, you, you're a big fat lad, so you're kind of in the middle. What, what's your take? Who's fat? Who's fat? 91, oh, I 91 knew it kilos, <laughs> six foot two, 91 kilos. What, what the hell is wrong with you? Uh, oh, God, I have been, I have been fat. I'd say in the pandemic, I got up as, I got up as high as 98 because the Astro was banned, they stopped us playing fucking football outdoors, didn't they? So I went fat there for a couple of uh, a couple lock of up weeks. the box. <laughs> Fuck up your daughters. Uh, I was, yeah, no, I was bad like in the pandemic. I was just because I started cooking for myself and all because I was at home all day. I was like, shit, this cooking shit is easy, man. And then I was just like, oh, before I knew it, I was like, fucking Ricky Hatton <laughs> in between fights. I didn't yeah. get me have a word with myself. I, I like knowing that I can cook well, but it's not good that like everything that I do involves butter in high amounts. I, it's just, I'm an asshole actually. now with the air fryer. I'm like one of these 20 year old fucking fitness influencers that's just seen a fucking air fryer for the first time. You know what you could make? Nachos. <laughs> fucking, well, they've been around forever. <laughs> <Fuck this. laughs> Let me show you how to make them in an air fryer. I mean, <laughs> oh dear. As far as banter goes, Matty, I thought this was quite a good one. Members of Devin Haney's team passed out this flyer at the start of the press conference that's going on at the Chase Center. The Rougarou captured. On December the 9th, creative trolling there, Matty. I, I have to give them credit, man. This was a good shit talking contest, and they came out on top, and they even had a finishing blow. So, fair play to Team Haney, who uh, I, I think we've uh, been dismissing for far too long. Anyone, anyone else fucking hate when fighters do that, right? And then they hug each other in the ring, and then they like tweet the knockout of the fella that just fucking shook hands with and fucking hugged him, like, yeah, good fight, man. And then tomorrow they go home and like tweet the knockout, like, ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> I like the Charlos. They're like shit houses in the ring. Was it Charlo knocked out Julian Williams and he refused to shake his hand afterwards? And he's the <laughs> ultimate, the ultimate shit house man. That's what I want to say. Oh, yeah, I do want a bit of pure hate. I actually, do you know what? Stop fucking hugging each other after the fights. Fucking hate each other till the till death. That's what I want to see. Me too. Glad we're on board there, Rob. Like these two, Prime Conor Ben versus Prime Amir Khan. Who wins and how, Andy? IFL oh, throwing in all the importance. Uh, I mean, hey, listen. <laughs> fucking, I was I was saying to a few boys at the boxing news, but you know, that's, that's a disgrace that they even thought of that question. Cook's thought about that. Oh, he's selfie, you know that? Mm -hmm. Maybe oh, it was man. one of the dead wood that came up with that, Andy? Yeah, no, I don't think so, mate. I think Cook's would come up with that one. You know, Cook's a great boxing mind. Clearly, I don't think... doing the big views at IFL. Well, well Ben is. 140, is he? Or 147? He's moving up to 147 now. Um, 154, mate. 154 he was. And Khan never did anything past 140. So you'd have to think Conor Ben has a puncher's chance at any stage in that fight. But versus a prime member Khan, he's done nothing to be in the ring with him in the first place. So it's a bit yeah. of a fucking non-question, isn't it? Yeah, good point. IFL, non-question. I thought it was a solid question by <laughs> Cooks. No. You know what? Well, well, he's well hang on, mate. He's probably paid his water bill for the month with that question. <laughs> Give the guy some credit, man. I thought that oh, by yourself, you know. <laughs> Michael Thompson carrying on like Ben is an active fighter. <laughs> 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 oh, sharp, sharp. Talking of active fighters, top rank, look after you. A loss. One minute they're promoting you, and then they'll get rid of you. Not in this case. Saturday, the 16th of December, Andy. Look down the card. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight places down in Equatorial Guinea. 
Nico Ali Walsh. <laughs> Holy sh! <laughs> nah, there's got, got to be two of them, eh? There's got to be two grandsons, eh? Equatorial Guinea, man. <laughs> Richard Lafty is fighting on that card as well. <laughs> oh, dear. They're not promoted. Kriegel's not promoting him anymore. No, it is It is the, 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 the right one, yeah? Tim? Fucking hell. <laughs> See that? I, 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 that French dude there is. It's Sofane Omuni. He's a, one of the French like, um, Olympians, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Who said, oh, I see one of the How Cubans the here as well. How got on that card quite a way? I see one of the Cubans on it as well. <laughs> Taylor Cruz. All right. And Mayo Mayo. County Mayo. If they build this as... I tell you what, right? If they build this as the rumble in the jungle, they can fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, that... Uh, that D could get swapped for a V as well down the bottom there, Mr. Baldy. Eh? <laughs> the, stumble, the stumble in the jungle, maybe. Uh, Bobo's going to get you. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it. He's going to shout at me, that fucking big dude. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. The great lad. We're so well. Yes. Look at the great lads. I will not stop until I get a, six, a single figure handicap. We meet former WBC Cruiserweight World Champion Tony Bellew, says Golf Monthly. To hear about his life in and out of the ring and what golf means to him. Now he has hung up his gloves. You should fight using again, actually, get a single digit handicap. <laughs> Can you imagine yeah. him saying that to someone at the clubhouse as well? Listen, mates, I will not stop until I get a single digit handicap. <laughs> I'm like, I'm so I walk around a fucking golf course. Shut the fuck up. You know what? Uh, on some, you don't play on my level, mates. <laughs> you know the the really interesting thing for Tony Steve is that on some grand day, if he keeps working on his golf game, there will be co- be this moment where his uh, handicap and his IQ intersect. <laughs> I tell you, I tell you, a good one about about a golf course. My my uncle Larry, my ma's brother, like notoriously fucking contrary. Put it that way, right? And that's that's an understatement. Notoriously contrary. A fucking nettle uh, named after the granddad, right? So, so my other, his brother was on the golf course with another lad from his work, and someone was like, "Did you hear about your man Larry? Like he jumped over the bridge, and someone jumped in to save him." And this guy piped up and was like, "It wasn't Larry McGrath anyway, because no one would have jumped in to save him. He's a fucking bollocks." <laughs> and my <laughs> uncle was like, "Hey, hey, hey, that's my brother." He's like, "I don't give a fuck whose brother it is. He's a fucking bollocks." <laughs> <laughs> Savage. <coughs> you talk, I swing, Tony. Getting the latest nomination. Hey, we need to find the bell you want so we can piggyback on his success and get the hashtags going here and get some mm. of your views. You know what I'm saying? We'll be bastard as well. We'll be a, get in the game here. Hey, AP says Mayo, Mayo's parents just didn't give two fucks, did they? There's a serious lack of imagination there, isn't there? Uh, Lazy bastard. With, with the Mayo, Mayo. <laughs> I think it's a stutter, actually. I think that's where it's been with the big industry <laughs> office. So that's where it's been, mate. Mayo, Mayo. <laughs> Are they from County Mayo in Ireland anyway? Quite possibly. Quite possibly. Uh, there was a show on Thursday, I think it was. Mr. Tumble turned up. He's wearing fucking Donny suits. What's he doing? <laughs> fucking hell, man. <laughs> He's definitely wearing that for a bit. There was no way he would. And I tell you, nothing, he, he actually got dressed in that at the arena. He never walked out the house wearing that shit, I can guarantee. <laughs> how, how Don is wearing that at the Christmas party right now. And he's about to dial in with about five minutes to go here for value of the week. <laughs> How pissed off would you be to wake up and find that under your tree in the morning? Jesus. <laughs> Set fire it, man. And the oh, tree. <laughs> Timmy Mallet, somebody says. Um, <laughs> oh, There's trouble in Dublin. This? You, you didn't know the half of it, Rob. <laughs> the guard <laughs> turning I'm up cage side. I think it's looking at my oh, I know this guy, baby. I think. There you are. Guards See, out the cage. Oh, but his fingers looking kind of crooked there, mate. I think he's been working the fucking dam for too long. Why are they bringing him over? I well, believe they're the Irish Irish Ford Stout Girls. Or the Ford Irish Stout Girls, whatever. Uh, well, my Gregor's last season. Uh, uh, well, you know. <laughs> Look at him, man. He always looks like he's in a fucking Duran Duran video or something, by the way. He's dressed, on he? Like, look at him. <laughs> Why, boys, never lose it. Um... I didn't know he was in Dublin, man. I fucking, I was fucking, I had a chance of hooking up with Ames on the night of the Dublin riots. I'm kind of glad that didn't happen for both of us. Um, but if I'd have known the guy was there, I would have pushed the boat out and gone to fucking go see him, go hang out with him in the Forge Diary Stout Girls. Why not? Like, mm-hmm. <clears throat> would have been nice to spend time with the guard. 
God, that was a weird fucking couple paragraphs. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine me hanging out with a guy for fuck's sake. <laughs> uh, Guerrero Berto, we already know about that. Oh. Out with Dominic. <laughs> There's one for you, Rob. Camille <laughs> Sokolowski, rematch against Sean Turner. In Big, the sexy. Indigo. <laughs> Big sexy. Big sexy. Six years seven, after the first fight, seven bare years. knuckle baby. Seven years, sorry, bare knuckle this time. It's BKB is I actually I don't know what BKB makes my stomach turn when I watch mm. it. I hate I'm it. The same. I fucking hate it. See that guy Mike Perry or whatever from the UFC, and he's fighting the guy Eddie Alvarez. It's just savagery in it. Like it's fucking horrible. But actually, yeah. but you know, best look to him. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of go, they're having it in the UK now as well. That's interesting. Yeah, maybe we yeah. maybe we'll see some crossover with the fucking um traveller community getting involved should, in the BKB. Should, should, should maybe see if we get press passes when we do a show ringside. They need to fucking get onto the travellers in Ireland, don't they, to start promoting BKB no. because they no, fucking no, 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 no. they do for the call outs because the call outs are shit. Like they need to fucking have proper call outs, proper date set, proper fair play men, and then we really get fucking get behind the BKB scene. Like. <laughs> no, we need to get John Fury involved then. We'll fight him. I'll fuck you up worse than when you fought Kalena. Remember him? Canela. <laughs> My son bet you. Canela bet you. Canela bet you. <laughs> <laughs> You're a bet man, Billy Joe. <laughs> oh, dear. What have we got here? Uh, Abner Mores. Everyone talking about the Haney fight, but the real fight was Rafael Espinosa. Upset win against Robezi Ramirez. What a fight. I haven't seen anything like this in a long time. Congratulations, Espinosa. Rick Glazer jumped in. Abner, that's because you work those lame PVC fights that you have to watch because you're getting paid to do so. <laughs> that's good work said, for Rick, actually. Ah, but I've said this before. I hate him, though, as well. Is is every, time, every time Abner Maris' name is mentioned, I cannot help but go back to Andy Patterson on the fucking podcast many years ago calling him a Wagalite cunt. <laughs> 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 in, in all fairness to Abner, I think the reason he wears sunglasses inside is because he's of a light. Icon. <laughs> it's because of issues he has with uh, light refraction because of his detached retinas. That Why shit, it, it, it just pops into my head. I see fellas and I'll be like, you walk. <laughs> it just pops into my head. It's like it sticks in my brain like the time I had it. Abner, Sean Porter. Leo Santa Cruz and some other PBC fighter and they all went around and were like, hey, how do you fucking want to define yourself? Do you want to define yourself by legacy? And everyone's like, legacy, legacy, legacy. And then it got to Santa Cruz and he's like, money. <laughs> he's like, Fuck this shit. Give me the money. Hi. <laughs> Michael Thompson. Rick needed a W. He certainly did. Uh, he's he's on the there, like... He certainly did. Uh, over on Pro Box, Matty, uh, Malinaji were doing bits. Uh, let's see what he had to say this week. Because uh, Ryan is basically Oscar La Hoya. If Oscar was retarded, you're going to cut that out. But in reality, <laughs> he's not as good as Oscar La Hoya. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Far be awesome. it from Paulie to fucking <laughs> say something. There? Ryan Garcia. He's Oscar, that. Oscar he's... if he's retarded. He's fucked up my fucking sky money, no way. Oh, look, out, look, out, look out for look out for Polly Ma, Malnazi on Polly TV on YouTube because that's the only place you're gonna fucking see him forever. That fucker is out in the cold, man. What a pity as well. One of the best analysts in the game, and he can't keep his fucking mouth shut because he's a moron. Oh, hey, you're fucking out. Wait, what's going on? Oh, he gets so excited, doesn't he? Oscar, uh, fucking Polly, like he's so animated. Where's your boss, Connor? Isn't a retarded Oscar De La Hoya just a bit superfluous? I don't know. Well, it's, it's just great, Oscar man. now. You just use a different analogy. You just say you're Oscar De La Hoya now. <laughs> Nowadays, then fucking uh, lead the ball. For all guy. the Ebony Breezes haters, yeah, we are lapping, lapping it up now. She won bodybuilding competition. Smart ass math teacher left her country to pursue a dream and has become a brand and successful OnlyFans. Also took on a tough fight and an easy touch. What you all done, Rob? Wanked off to the OnlyFans. Not me, like I'm saying. The, the, the person, person he's addressing in that tweet. Oh, Lordy. Yeah. Uh, no matter how hard you simp, buddy, she's not going to pay for your hair plugs. Anyway, yeah, please, dog, she'll rise like the Phoenix and come again. Like Jade what? can. It's, it's a str Like, I don't know. Horses for horses and all. But, like, these fellas who want to get into, like, strange friend zone with celebrity females. Like, I... I they're laughing at you too, pal. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> they're laughing at the guy's right, hate. They're laughing at you as well. Just say that. That guy's a mark. Give me your money. Mm -hmm. The zone to friend zone. 
Um, no fights for you. There's no, no fights for you. <laughs> no fights for you either. No wanks for you. Um, no one for you, baby. There's hope for us, though, boys. Uh, to Mia, what, 41, coming 42, as 59-year-old Scott England stepped into the ring yes. against just Sean Hunter. Oof. And uh, a Declan Graffin said to me during the week, at least I like the way he came out and established the jab, <laughs> which was a good start. <laughs> 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 uh, j- j- just seconds in, and let's just uh, s- just watch. The right and a left, and, and his head slammed off the canvas yeah who the fuck let that happen <laughs> i posted that in the whatsapp the other day though <laughs> who let grandpa out of the home ah, that's not right man like that's like that fucking scene out know, of fucking what's it call it old school or something isn't it where they had the old guy chipping or like tying the fucking anvil to his balls or something that's that's what that looked like didn't it when he was fucking hitting the dick <laughs> That's fucked up, man. These balls. The fellow's fighting. The fellow's fighting is about fucking twenty. That's so fucking not right. Like the guy's throwing punches in slow motion, gets hit with a fucking three-piece combo. He's out before he hits the deck, and the referee's looking all concerned. You fucking what? You should have waved that off before the fucking started. You pricks, like what? Who let that? He must have been fighting for fucking food or Hunger Games or something, isn't it? Like that's a Hunger Games promotion, like. Fuck me, man. <laughs> the three piece thief. Throw that again for the knockout, will you? Fuck me. Like that yep, three pieces like David Benavides a few years ago. Like they're saying it's like Liam Smith in the chat. Let's have a look. <laughs> uh, j- j- just seconds in, and let's just uh, s- just watch. The right and a left, and, and his head slammed off the canvas. Yeah. Oh, oh, she shipped. He's on the dick. Give me a break. Ah, lads. Look up. That's somebody's grandpa. How the fuck has that made it on TV as well, by the way? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Fuck's sake. Boxing. Well, he's Norton 1 now, but unfortunately he won't be having any other fights. There he is. Suspended <laughs> by the Tennessee Athletic Commission. Now, when they're suspending you. <laughs> and definitely as well, You mate. know that there's something wrong. There's only one roll back is against Father Dave, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So someone asked me that question. Who would you fancy in that fight? I was saying, it's be Father Dave. He's oh, got the experience. He's got the big man in his corner. Yeah. Yeah. It's got all going for him. He's a priest as well, you know. And he believes, man. He believes. <laughs> I believe. <laughs> <laughs> the poor bass. What was he thinking? Like, he's gone. See what? Really was he thinking, man? Fifty-eight year old get ice like that. Fuck see it, what man. goes through my head? Like he's gone through someone, ha- somewhere, like a multitude of people along the way have let this happen. Like he's gone to a gym. He's got his hands wrapped, his cup protector, his license somehow to fight. <laughs> Fifty-eight. Yeah. They've I watched they him. Got Somebody's like. Thinking- yeah, he's I think he could do okay. He's the nicer saying this. He's the nicer going to say, are you sure you want to do this, mate, before I announce this shit? <laughs> you, you guys are laughing now, but one of the, in a couple of years, when you see the Netflix series about how he saved his trailer, you're not going to think it's all that funny. But <laughs> trailer, I'm like, why did he close the back of the car? I'd rather Please fucking push. sleep rough than sleep on the camera. <laughs> <laughs> you... Well, at least he can turn professional. That's the main thing. Well, Jake, well, calm. You know what I'm saying? We all know he's not sleeping on silk sheets. Pull out the camera. <laughs> War fucking this guy's name. Whatever this guy's name is. I oh, Somebody pointed out in the chat. Look at the ra- ratings for the American ratings. Matt, say 324. Oh, There's two. <laughs> but in the world, though, mate, he's, two, he's ranked 2063 in the world due to 2019. He but found wait, himself that... having to take fights against what? the top guys because the bottom two were avoiding him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm gonna have to look this up now. Let's have a look to the final. Page. I'm, gonna the... To... I'm gonna have to see who the two worst fighters are than him. Who are worst super lightweights? The, you know, the sad thing is, you know, he, he was just outsized in there. He was hoping to smoke a little bit more meth and make it down to one uh, down to one forty. <laughs> There's no way he's five foot nine either. By he's at least almost six feet. That dude. Here we are. So there's. Norton one Timothy Lawrence is below him, and Norton one Christopher Aguaniga. Well, he's going Lawrence. to go bottom new after that performance, mate. Timothy Lawrence doesn't look great now, to be fair. And Aguaniga. Right, okay, mm. let's let's sort of so, so who got knocked out the quickest out of the three of them in the first well, race? Well, Timothy Lawrence went the into the third round. 
No, so he's not the worst fighter, mate. No, Aguinaga got knocked out in the first as well, so he's definitely the worst. So what? Uh, but what was the time? Uh, let's see, two forty-four. So right, he I'm went wrong. for an ex. He went for a good fifteen odd seconds compared no. to your man. No, so there he goes. So your man here is the is the worst. Scott England, Scott Irish. All right. Well, I don't know. He could be Scott back. Scott Welsh. Andy, could be back. Hope he's not getting any Scottish blood in him, by the way. You know, how those, you, you know how those Yanks have got all these different types of blood in them all. I'm half, yeah. I'm, I'm one third Scottish, I'm one third Irish, I'm one third fucking, you know, Cherokee Indian and all that shit, man. I'm like, fucking shut well, up, dude. Well, if it wasn't for widespread use of condoms during World War One and World War Two, you'd have better blood over there, too. What? They get me fucking out of your It's like, oh, my uh, fucking uh, grandfather was O'Malley. Do you know him? I'm like, no, the country has <laughs> fucking five million people. I don't know him. Like, no, I probably know a, something belonged to him. You had, a, you had a fuck with him, like, O'Malley? Yeah, I know that fucking cunt O'Malley. You're a little bit. Timothy Lawrence, uh, Steve, by the way. Yeah. You feed him to fucking Richard Torres. He fucking punch the braids off him. <laughs> All right, well, he's he's not even the worst. It's Aguinaga. Let me see if I can get him up. He's only five foot two, Aguinaga. Hey, uh, super, yeah, super lightweight. Oh, oh yeah. I, I know. I'm prolonging things here. Let me see. So we've got hey, Aguinaga. Well, so we got there we are. He could be all one and all if he was fucking, if he could only make junior lightweight. <laughs> Look at this guy. La Bamba. <laughs> Fuck's sake, man. Don't go on any light aircraft. That's some, fucking, that's some fucking Kuzlik he's got there as well. Hey? That's some yeah. shady he's got there, man. What the mm-hmm. fuck? Who, who's the worst boxer in the world of all weight classes based on that? That's an Aussie oh. question, actually. Yeah. That's like the, the time he I wanted don't know, to but Eddie fire. Hearn probably has him fighting someone. You know, and I gotta be in honest a, with you. In a 50 <laughs> 50. I'm more inclined to trust the few. bottom of the box rec rankings than the top. Probably. I'm trying to have a look, but we're going down a rabbit hole here. Right, final one. Uh, this was dug up from six years ago, but it's definitely worth it. A few people are reposting it from Isaac Warrior Low. Oh, he was getting God. ready for a fight back in March 2017, and he tweeted out to the fans, I got three days to pancake in. To me, fish and chips are five gays. Chinese and a Domino's and a few more is ticking now. I get it all in. <laughs> oh, I guess it all in, baby. <laughs> five gay Chinese, get it all in. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I, I bet you Jalil Zhang is about the equivalent of five normal Chinese. Maybe it's just one bad night with him. <laughs> <laughs> A big bang, literally. Uh, right. That's all the ones I've got. Anything from you, Matthew? You got anything, Matthew? I guess we didn't have the one that that Liam. I think Liam sent it to to us regarding uh, Eddie's uh, hair plugs that are barely yes. holding on by a thread. Yes, so, thank you. Uh, yep, we we had had that one, uh, but uh, if without the image, uh, does it does it no no justice, unfortunately. Yes, yeah, quite right. I'll try and remember for next. I week. think we should also just laugh at Montana Love a little bit. He's kind of a dickhead, right? Yeah, he's an odd character, isn't he? Yeah, I think there might be a wee issue there, though. More than one, I think, Steve. <laughs> Possibly. Uh, Andy, anything from you, please? Uh, one for Scam Jones, mate. Ooh. Uh, he came out during the week there on Box Social saying that Conor Ben has been worse treated than any other athlete who's found a drug test. Oh, fuck dude. off. Exactly. This dude should be banned for two years without any dispute. No clear to fucking fight. So I won for Scam Jones and that as well because uh, I, think, I, think, I tell you what, it's even, you know, it's bad when the likes of Anthony Fowler's pulling you up and you've got people actually backing up Anthony fucking Fowler. So that tells you the same story. So if Anthony Fowler can actually unite the clans against fucking Sergey Scam Jones, then uh, yeah, I think Sam deserves his, his, his wee spot there, mate. The one for say Sam Jones. Well, and that's mm-hmm. like people like Gerald Miller or uh, Larry Alumbo I mean, yeah, fuck, those guys actually served fucking years. What it didn't Soslowski just say, fucking kick it in? I'll go to a different sport, even. Like, he's, Ben's gotten the fucking best treatment about of any drugs cheat that I can think of in recent memory. Fucking right. And what also for is uh, Lucas Brown got iced <laughs> fourth, fourth round there last night against yeah. Matt. Who saw that coming? <laughs> I know. Not Lucas. <laughs> but try. Petrovsky is like six or seven and all, whatever, and that, though. So, 
Yeah, big dad. I think he got dropped twice, I think, in the early rounds and then got stopped in the fourth. Got dug by a right hand, fell into the ropes and then it was just, uh, I think he counted, I think, and then just got piled on as well for one for big dad. He just, he just fell in the void I these days as a journeyman. I should stop fucking slagging off Big Daddy. Like, remember he used to have a Boxing Asylum t-shirt and that he was posing it and all like it didn't. If you ever listened to the Boxing Asylum, it was just me fucking caning him for the last six years. He's like, finally found his way down to our level, but it looks a bit rough. <laughs> Came well, in he's going to be in the bottom three if he doesn't fucking retire <laughs> soon, isn't he? Like, fuck he, was in, he, he, was in, he was in Dubai there last night fighting, right? And I can guarantee you, he felt so alone. He didn't have that sausage roll for Greg's to eat and that as well. I don't think what Greg's there in fucking Dubai yet. So. But he must, have, he must have made decent money, Big Daddy. He's been in a lot of fights. Like, obviously, yeah, I was like, thinking you, that. you know, you get insights from the fighters and the money. The money's only good at the top. It's like anything. It's like music. It's like fucking TV, film, or whatever. Fella can be an actor. You know, he could be on fucking Fair City getting 14000 a year, like as opposed to Hollywood. So there's different pay scales, obviously. But Big Daddy's been on lots of sca- Sky Fights, lots of fucking pay-per-view undercards, lots of cards in Australia. Like, he, he surely think his money is made and his health at this stage is more important because he's taking fucking heavy punishment. Like, remember the rugby guy knocked the fucking shit out of him? Mm, Gallon, yeah. That's a couple of years ago as well. Like so, yeah. I know we're on value of the week, but you'd like to see Lucas Big Daddy Pro retire, wouldn't you? Like, or not? Like, we have another couple of value value of the week. <laughs> over the years, content, content exactly. is king. Yeah. You know that way. Content is king. Thanks, Big Daddy, for your contribution. Uh, any more, Andy? Ask me, mate. Lovely, uh, Roberto. Anything from Mars? Anything from you, Rob? Uh, no, just one from my man, uh, D4 Head Movement from Birmingham. He's a long-time listener, stays in touch on the gram. Um, boxing trainer himself, close with JK, the rapper from Birmingham. But yeah, a big fan of the asylum. But he sent me a clip where it looked like Eddie Hearn's face was falling off. He's like, what's going on with the Botox with, with this fella? But I took it a step further and I started to think that, you know... Maybe Eddie is a reptilian shapeshifter after all, and the evidence is ever coming out in a boxing social video. So, uh, Eddie, you know what you're up to? Hand, hand in your fucking. Uh, but anyway, we wish him well. We I know indeed. what you're up to, and it's not even it. Yep, 100%. <laughs> right. All the ones the boys are thrown in, plus mine. Let's go through them again quickly. We've got uh, Snakey Suleiman, Eddie making himself available. Uh, we've got John promoting shite. We've got Eddie versus Frank. We've got the Rougerie poster. IFL's content. Nico Ali Walsh turning up in Equatorial Guinea. We've got Tony turning up anywhere these days. Golf monthly this week. We've got Mr. Tumble stroke Donny. got the Gad turning up in Dublin. <clears throat> Just what they needed. Uh, Guerrero versus Berto. Sokolowski against Turner rematch in Bare Knuckle. Abner Mares getting iced, glazed almost by Rick. We've got Lee the Bull guy protecting Ebbs. We had Isaac Warrior Low as well talking nonsense. We had Scott England getting tagged and iced in a few seconds. Floyd Mayweather's advert as well. Nice, nice uh, and speak. also Malinaji on Pro Box. Matty, who are you going for this week? Um, I think I have to go with Nico Ali Walsh being deported fucking to the third <laughs> world by Bob. <laughs> Oh, yeah. you? <laughs> it's a tough break, Andy. Who are you going for? Fucking hell, man. What is um, this fella? Like fucking David Carradine just wandering the fucking deserts looking for fights now. Like, <laughs> could end similarly um, too, Rob. The <laughs> Joan Rivers one on David Carradine. She said, hang in there. <laughs> I'm going to go for Abner Mares, mate. Getting glassed. Abner Mares getting glassed by old Rick Glazer. He glassed me. <laughs> hey, fucking glass me. You're gonna get physically shot. Who are you going for this week, Rob? Um, who were the nominees again? <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me. His voice, man. Um, I, was, I was gonna ask as well, but his voice is. But I didn't want to do it to him. Yeah, I think the fucking uh, Rick Lays was pretty good, isn't it? Like, almost <laughs> like, <laughs> It's pretty thin this week. Like, it's not not crazy. So yeah, we go for Rick. We'll go for Rick Glazer. Uh, yeah, um, I'll throw in Rick Glazer. Oh, no, sorry, the old what? dude. I got his fucking, the old oh, guy from old school. I got the fucking head poked off of me. Scott, he's had, he's had enough trouble, Rob, man. Leave him alone. No, he's my, no that's mine. Like, whoever, not not more so for him, but whoever fucking sanctioned that belt. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> it's worse than them fight that time. Remember the fellas were fight, fucking fighting in a river? The loser fucking falls in the river. Remember that week? <laughs> yeah, as in Russia. Pretty badly. That's right. All right, go on then. We'll second that one then. Scott England, 
He's had a bad weekend, Matty. Somebody's, we'll somebody's, yeah, somebody's grandpa, cousin, sister, brother is really hurt there. <laughs> in Tennessee. <laughs> Congratulations, Scott England. You might have got knocked out cold, but you are the belly of the week winner for episode 552. And that is all. I have Matty back to you to close it out. Thank you. All right, Steve. It has uh, been a fun one getting out of here at a reasonable time today. My word. Uh, thanks to David Palmer for his super chat. I think that's two or even maybe even three weeks in a row. God bless you, David. And also Sukhvir Singh throwing us in five as well. We appreciate both of you very much. And uh, we will see you next Sunday, of course, for our regular show. And then the week after that, what we're planning on doing is coming in and joining you on Saturday and doing a fight companion uh, for the uh, big uh, heavyweight card coming in from Saudi Arabia on the 23rd. And we'll do that in lieu of a show on Christmas Eve uh, so that uh, everybody can spend some time in their, uh, with their uh, families on the holidays. Not me in particular. I'm just going to stay home and get high by myself. Um, but that's how I like to celebrate. And fuck you if you don't like that. Um, but uh, anyhow, I would like to thank Steve Wellings, Rob Kelly, and Andy Patterson for joining us today. And also everybody that uh, joined us in the chat as well. I've been your host, Matt DiGiannardo, and I hope you folks have a fantastic week and also a safe and uh, warm holiday season as well. We'll never forget. Yeah, let's get up. Go to Edinburgh! We want to be honest, yeah. Crying like a little bitch. I've never met a fucking so I can fight me. I fell asleep. I fell asleep. You're a fucking bum, you're a fucking asshole. Grumpo fucking stilt skin. But allegedly Oscar Rivas has has, has failed has failed a test. Seven year eight. Seven year eight. I will fucking smash fucking you. I hope you fucking die. Be safe. I love boxing sounds, simple as that.